back to I only listen to nineties music. Uh, yeah, I'm on location, uh, so you know I'm not like in witness protection or nothing <laughs> like that. You know, because <laughs> that's what it looks like. I know in the background, and I got a, and I got and I got a, a button up like I'm in the uh, why not YSL trial or uh, what's the uh, Young Dolph trial? Like <laughs> we have already determined that Scott is in jail. That he's right. at the jail. we've already right. Right. witness protection. Right, we've, we've, yeah, yeah, already, yeah, no and we've already discussed this during the last episode that Scott was at the workhouse and Daryl apparently is in the federal witness protection right now as he awaits to testify against Scott ass. I don't know what's going on. Um, I'm still in my house, minding my business. Um, the people haven't come to get me yet. Um, but uh, now that I know the feds is watching, let me, um, they always watch. Right. Let me chill out. Well, we talking about the feds. Y'all, you, we've been doing surviving Diddy for, a year almost at this point. Almost a year. Um, yeah, we started. Uh, we talked about beforehand. We started with the <clears throat> giving back of publishing and uh Aubrey O'Day. We did a clip of Aubrey O'Day talking about how she don't take it because you have to sign an NDA that you can't say anything about that happened with that bad boy and telling people not to take it. Um now we have like literally right the day after that, wasn't the dawn. Was it? Well, we talked about the Don one. No, so we we reported <clears throat> on the twelfth. We recorded on the twelfth, right? Yep. We talked about the Don Richards lawsuit. Four days later, on the sixteenth, yeah, on the sixteenth is when Diddy was arrested by Homeland Security, not the not the neighborhood police, not the NYPD, <laughs> not the NYPD. Not state police, um, not the, you know, not them, not the, not the troopers. Yeah. <laughs> U.S. Homeland Security came to get him. Um, no, he report. He report. He brought himself in. Yeah. Well, okay, man. Yeah, he was. He was. In, he was like basically he was indicted by a grand jury on charges of racketeering, conspiracy, and sex trafficking. And if you don't understand racketeering. Um, you obviously don't watch Power. It's the RICO Act, ladies and gentlemen. RICO. The oh, you don't know about mafia stuff for, either. You don't know about mafia. Right, like the the R in RICO stands for racketeering. So. Um, and I forgot what the I means, but the, the C and O is a criminal organization. I know that. Yeah, racketeering. Uh, what, is, what is that? Um, it is a good question. Wait a minute. Like I can't let it go. I have to find out what the I is. <clears throat> Uh, oh, Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act okay, is yep, what the okay. RICO Act is. So, <laughs> blah blah blah. If you if you got a, if you have an empire, right? If you got a little little business like that, um, and they can you you call yourself you, if you call people that are underneath you your lieutenant your lieutenants, you probably going to jail. Mm -hmm. Big jail too, big jail, not not baby. And, look, and for people that may not know, they got the, they got the big wall for you with the pictures and the little strings. Yeah, and the, uh, they and the, the and the uh, yeah, and they the got you on the top. You yep. you are the top of the pyramid, okay? And then it they got you uh, they got Har Pierre over there on one side. <laughs> God, uh, what is the one? Uh, was it uh, not? Uh, was it what is the uh, woman that they've been naming in all the lawsuits? Um, is it? It's not Egypt, Nefertiri, uh, Ethiopia, Ethiopia, Ethiopia. They got Ethiopia on one side and Harpier on another side, and then other random people below them. It's the what, what it looks like to me. <laughs> they got everybody this nigga ever took a picture with. Yep, <laughs> yeah. it's a it's a lot. There's a lot. There's a whole so, lot. Where do, we, so, where do we start? Where do we start? Well, so, let me say this the. I've read both of the indictments, right? Okay. The the indictment for the one from Homeland Security, um, the, the federal charges, that one, so, I mean, as, if you don't know, Diddy is currently in jail. He's being held without bond. They, his lawyers offered up $50 million, and the judge said no, no. It's like, so they won't let him out because they, they And he showed up thinking he was getting right out, too. Like, somebody that went to go get a ticket, and they was like... No, 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 no. Your license is I bet, he, hey, I bet you he smiled on his mug side. Because <laughs> he thought I'm he was that has not leaked, though. I'm surprised that hasn't leaked. The mug side. I think I kind of saw it. I think I kind of saw it. I was just seeing the pictures of the uh from court. 
Right, the, the drawings. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm Googling uh, now. Maybe, you know what? So don't the way. Oh, the, no, they got it. It's I would say he like uh, I was sure okay. that I've seen it. I'm like, I thought I did. Listen, I don't sometimes I don't know what I've seen because the it's it's not the Mandela effect. It is me thinking that there is it was a video for human nature all those years. I don't trust anything that I see anymore. Okay. I don't trust my memory no more. But um, so Diddy is being held without bail. And they it's because they denied him because they are worried about him intimidating witnesses that once he gets out. Here we go. So, right here. here we go. This mugshot right there oh, for you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I thought that was an old mugshot. I didn't know that was current. I thought yeah. that was back from the J Lo shit. <laughs> no, this is the one. Right. So the um he the lawsuit accuses him of using his life. Which, which one is this? Which one is this? Oh, one? this is the, so this is the federal indictment. We haven't yeah, okay. like, we're just only talking about what he was why he was arrested, right? right. So he was arrested because uh, that lawsuit accuses his lifestyle, um, media and music companies that he uh, to use to help orchestrate and widespread criminal enterprise. Participants in these criminal activities included Combs' security, personal assistance, and staff, according to the indictment. Those associates helped Combs abuse, threaten, and coerce women and others to fulfill his sexual desires, protect his reputation, and conceal his conduct. So... The idea is that within the things that he was doing, right? So they're not digging into or the whole, what everyone is currently talking about in the, um, in regards to his activities and the freak offs. That's not what's in this indictment, right? So, um, or that, uh, the, I take that back. The thousand, the thousand bottles of um, baby oil are in that indictment, right? So it mentions what they got during the raid. What is interesting about the thousand bottles of baby oil is that if you ask me, it was petty to mention it. Right? Yeah, that was just he absolutely that was brought it up because it's funny as fuck. Mm -hmm. Because and it's like and and forgive me anyone that is watching. Earlier today, I watched Josh Johnson's comedy special, or not comedy special, but his latest stand up with him talking about this. So there may be something that comes out of my mouth that he said earlier because it's something I'm thinking too, or it's just fresh in my mind. But one of the things he said, he said two things. One of them, he was like, "How guilty do you have to be?" for New York State to be like, we're not taking 50 million. This is the same, like these are the people who will ticket you for anything, right? Like you gotta pay for everything. And they said, 50 million? No. But, but, but now, now, now this is not the state though, this is the feds. But I'm saying, but either way, right? Yeah. Like it's the, no, nah, we're all we right. Want and we don't want that, nope, we're good. Um, and he is being detained at Brooklyn's Metropolitan Detention Center. From my understanding, it's not a nice place. Yeah. And, okay. The funnier part. Guess who his next cell, next door cell yeah, is? Yeah. The, the, right. the crypto the, uh, guy. Chain. Yes. Yeah, the <laughs> it's chain. crypto guy. So I'm sure. I mean, and look, you are supposed to go. Uh, you FTX go to jail, or whatever it is. FTX. Right. So like, when you go to jail, you're supposed to learn a trade, and I feel like he's gonna come out with doing some crypto stuff, right? You gotta reinvent yourself. <laughs> okay. Um. The one of the greatest parts about the indictment, uh, that indictment, is that um, it lists, it lists him like the way that they list his name. They have to list every name every, that he's yep. and um, it's that's just funny as hell. Um, another thing I said, I mentioned in the thousand baby uh, bottles of baby oil. So two things with that. One uh, is Josh Johnson said that he said he went to someone's house and. Um, he was looking for, he'd asked him, do they have any Tylenol or whatever it was? And he said, oh, it's in a cabinet. He goes to the cabinet, doesn't see it, looks underneath the sink. Looks underneath the sink and there's three bottles of baby oil. And he said, he thought to himself, damn, they some freaks. He was like, cause one for, he's like one bottle. Okay, all right. He was like, but two, <laughs> but three? He's like, oh, they nasty. He was like, so that he's like, but they, he said, this is just a regular couple. He was like, they didn't have any kids. So I know it was for them. He's like, and those, he's like, those three bottles made me look at them different. <laughs> and he had a thousand. But I, what, I, what I will say is, if you read the sentence of it, it's a thousand bottles of baby oil in lubricant. Mm -hmm. So it could have been 500 and 500. We don't know. What we do know is that it's a lot of moisturizer. <laughs> That's a lot of moisture. Moisturizer or um, 
something. There's a word and it's just, I don't have it in my brain. That's a lot. It's just a lot. Um, and we, I have to mention a, um, an article from the New York Post um, because Costco, because uh, Diddy's lawyer stated that the uh, 11 of the thousand bottles were because Diddy buys in bulk from like Costco. Um, Costco said, we don't even sell baby oil. <laughs> oh wow! They don't even sell Johnson and Johnson products. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So a spokesperson for for Costco told TMZ on Thursday that none of the company's U.S. locations carry baby oil. So unless he was getting it in Costa Rica and bringing it back into the states, he was going to Sam's. <laughs> oh, was he going straight to Johnson and Johnson? That well, right. I think I said to somebody as he was getting a wholesale. I don't know, but it's well, just it might have been just directly. Like, hey, Johnson and Johnson, I'm buying directly from you, to, and I'm gonna cut you a check for twenty thousand. Well, so here's the let thing. Them, they let you know, if you, I mean, here's the thing. If you find you somebody who understand how to coupon, he could have got the hook up on him. Look, I, this put when I was in my coupon phase of life. I would stock up all the time on uh, what if that's your toilet paper. <laughs> Hold on, Stacey. What if that's your entry to the freak off? Like how you bring canned goods for like an event or something? Like to get, like like if you don't want to pay to get in, you bring baby oil. Freak off like supplies. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, yeah. Our school supplies or some our backpack for the kids. Your thing is baby oil, so he's just stocking them up. Because when you walk in, you get them baby oil. <laughs> the freak off supply drive. Yeah. <laughs> And then somebody's like, hey, man, when you come through, hey, man, bring a baby or like, oh, no, no. It's like, hey, man, you need me to bring something, man. You know, this is just come hard. On, man. This baby oil, man. I mean, that's come you on, sure. Man. Like, we tried to make these freak offs last night. Campaign, no wings, no nothing. For, no, this baby oil. That's all we need, baby. baby. You know what I'm saying? That's all we Sarah, need, though. Sarah, what I need you to do in the background, we're like, you need to talk. There is a clip of Diddy on Conan. Okay, I need you to grab it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's, on, he's, he's talking to Conan. It's a quick clip. And Diddy has on a jersey. So it looks like it's early 2000s-ish. <clears throat> Find that clip. And we're going to play that. Because oh, there's man. something. This, I'm sure on, this will be used to against him. I'm like, I'm sure this will be used against him um, in a court of law. But um, there are, simply put, Anything that you say publicly can be used against you, right? Like they can look at that and be like, well, he said X, Y, Z. And again, this isn't something that you had to say in private quarters or that was a privilege, you know, a privileged information. This is something you said. And this, look at this clip when he pulls it up. This is something he said on Conan O'Brien on national television on like on this is what NBC. And he said it out loud. And it's like, it's like he's joking. But he's not. And it, at this point, and, and this is what always happens, is that all of a sudden everyone starts to dissect everything that you've ever said or done, right? All of a sudden now everything is suspect that you've ever done that no one looked at a suspect before. And I hate that because it's like you're wasting time trying to figure out, oh, well, what did he really mean when he said that? But this clip? These may be Diddy's nope, very last it. seconds of freedom. The wrong one. That that's, it said it was it, but that's not it. All right. Go keep going. Keep going. Right. So, like I said, but with that clip, um, like I said, what he says is, um, uh, uh, it, it's a problem. It's it's definitely like, wait, what? And it's so to 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 that point, to hear to hear what he says, and then to read the indictment, you're like, well, wait a minute. Hold on, this is kind of same, same one. Like this isn't a one of these things. It's not like the other situation. Mm -hmm. uh, the in the background, um, uh, one of uh, Hugh Hefner's girlfriends, like the, the girls that had the show um, with him. One of the girl Kendra, um, the one that I always thought that she looked so, her face was so hard. But anywho, um, so she was on a podcast recently, and they asked her about going to parties at Diddy's house or Diddy being at the uh, the the Playboy Mansion. And she says, I remember just going to like one or two parties with Diddy. But again, I like had a great time in my youth. Right. So, you know, she went to, she was dating, you know, Hugh Hefner when he was like 60 years old. Right. She met she moved into the Playboy Mansion when she was 18. 
So there's that part, right? Um, she said, I didn't really see anything though. Like I never saw anything really bad happening around me. Sex is sex in my opinion. So I'm not saying that something bad didn't happen. I'm saying that, you know, nothing bad ever happened to me. And I'm like, well, that that's fair. I'm like, and I think a lot, I think sometimes people, that's a problem sometimes too, when it comes to when someone is accused of something like this is that you'll get people who are like, I don't, they'll end up, they're defending the person, but they're not defending the person rather than saying like, I think it's fair to, to, for someone to say, I'm not saying they didn't do it. Right. Or I'm not saying that this person is not capable of that. I'm stating that that person never tried that with me. That's not a behavior that I saw. Um, and versus just saying, oh, he wouldn't do that. You don't know what that person would do with someone else. People try who they want to try and they think mm -hmm. you know, what they want, I want to do. So, cause to that point, um, one of the things about the most important things about this case are that Diddy, you would is like the the fact that they won't let him out because they're afraid of him intimidating people. Go he already did it though, didn't he? he Send like forty text messages to somebody already and stuff like so, that. Right, right. So that and to that point, that goes into <clears throat> how. Oh, oh, here you go. Here's, here's the clip right here, though. Okay. Uh, here you go. Drink water at parties. If you don't have what they need, they're gonna leave. Right. Got to right. keep them there. Right. You need, you need locks on the doors. <laughs> Okay, this Look, is sounding kind of dangerous now. It's a little kinky, but yeah, you know, yeah. rock with me, but just right. check it out. You need um, a lot of heat. You don't have no air conditioning. No air conditioning. No. Why is that? Heat affects the alcohol, and it also affects, like, um, you know, everybody gets a little bit more comfortable and loose. Builds up a nice little sweat. <laughs> there you go. So, yeah, there's a... Um... He can, so what he said, what he's talking about is having parties and in, uh, Conan was like, okay, so what do you need to throw a party? And then he did, he's like, okay, first you need a lot of alcohols. And then, uh, Conan was like, alcohols. He's like, alcohols, multiple alcohols. And he was like, okay. He's like, and then you need water. And then Conan said, water, what water for what? He was like, because ladies like water. He's like, some women come, they just want to drink water. He was like, and if you, if they come to your party and you don't have what they need, they're going to leave. So you got to have water for the lady. Then Conan was like, okay, okay. So again, so far, so good, right? What he has said, you got to have some alcohol. Women like water, you got to have the water. And then he says, and you got to lock the doors. And then that's when Conan says, well, wait, wait what now? Hold on. Wait, hold on. Dangerous. Like, wait a minute, hold on. It's getting a little dangerous here. Hold on. Like, because again, we went from we got alcohol, we got water, and now you gotta lock the doors. What why you gotta like you see, like Conan says, wait, wait, oh, lock the doors. I was with you until then. Right, like why we got a lot of doors gotta get locked. He's like, Yeah, and then he's like, you know, you gotta make sure it's really hot in there. And then Conan's like, hot, why hot? He's like, Oh yeah, no AC. Because you want to like, you know, like the alcohol, you know, it helps, you know, with the alcohol, like with the uh, with uh, the heat helps with uh, activate that alcohol in you. And then everybody gets a little, you know, uh, you know, everybody's getting a little loose and all that. And and then uh, I think Conan says something's like, it sounds like everybody's just really sweaty. And then he's like, no, you know, it's like, it's like, you know, it's like a bird, right? Well, he's like, oh, he's like, it's sexy. And then he was like, yeah. And it's like. This is weird. And that's when the uh, the nurse practitioner come in with the IVs. Yeah, that's the wild. <laughs> so shortly thereafter, like so after Diddy gets locked up, eight days later, or two days ago on Tuesday, a lawsuit was filed by a woman accusing Diddy of drugging and sexually assaulting her. Um, so I read that indictment. That one is difficult to get through um, when you read what she went through. Um, the uh, I'll give you the gist of it. She was dating someone. The, uh, the, the victim is Thalia Graves. So her name is listed in the indictment. Um, and I think she was 25 at the time. Um, she was dating someone who was working for Diddy. His name is not mentioned. I don't know who it is. Um, so he was, uh, uh, was working for her boyfriend was working for someone um, that worked for Diddy and he was Diddy apparently called her and wanted to talk to her about her boyfriend's career. So this is I, I'm still having trouble understanding this because 
she it's the the idea that she was willing to do anything to help him and wanted to find out what she what needed to happen so she um ended up meeting up with diddy and diddy and um the other guy i forgot his name already um there's another man that's mentioned in the indictment is a harpier no uh is it sherman wait a minute oh crap hold on wait a minute <laughs> Holy crap. Like, I'm like, I forgot his name like that quick. Um, like, so th to that point, he's not the only, in that, um, in that one, he is not the, Diddy is not the only person that is mentioned. Uh, where is he at? Oh, come on. Hold on, wait a minute. I'm sorry, I pulled up the wrong indictment on my phone. There's more than one. I pulled up the wrong. One. The fact that uh, he has too many names. Joseph Sherman, otherwise known as Big Joe. So that's who are the two people that are named in this. Um, uh, in this lawsuit so she a uh, security guard right it's supposed to be right. a security guard. Uh, i don't know if he's a security guard it's uh i know the one that the re most recent was security guard saying that uh, yeah 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 so guard. that's the, that's him so um they pick her up um they uh they basically diddy comes to pick her up um uh diddy and uh big joe they go back to bad boy um studios or like she said that she uh they gave they, she gets in the car, they give her a glass of wine, right? And she takes a sip of wine. And then she said, she starts noticing that she doesn't feel as well. She feels a little dizzy, a little woozy. And um, she thought that it was, and then she's like, she's trying to pull herself together and all of that because she's like, okay, I can't, I'm, I'm trying to help my boyfriend in his career. I got like, okay, girl, you know, oh, that's the one where the, uh, they try to get her, her boyfriend. He tried to get, get her boyfriend. She was like a model, right? What I don't know. About? So that's what I'm saying. I don't know where she what what I know is that she her she was dating someone who worked for for Diddy. That's what that's how it's detailed in the indictment. Right. It doesn't go into what she who like her background, but it's like that's what she was. So um, she as she's getting out of the car. She's kind of stumbling because and then she's like she's realizing she's like, OK, well, oh, my God, like I got to. Oh, girl, you're going to mess around and got drunk, mess, trying to drink some wine, girl. You got to pull it together. Pull yourself together. She goes into the studio and then she ends up um, uh, like feeling extra woozy and everything, ends up passing out, wakes up naked. And uh, wait, uh, and so from there, um, they did what they did to her. Um, and, uh, so, and she was in basically in and out of consciousness the entire time. Um, at one point she did realize that he, um, had, you know, drugged her and all of that. So, um, she ends up being able to, uh, it, it's, I don't, I don't, I don't, yeah, I'll say escaping. So she ends up waking up. There's no one around her. She grabs her clothes, gets out of there. She does tell her boyfriend what happened. Her boyfriend encourages her to keep her mouth closed because of, I don't want to mess this up. Um, so she is um, extremely injured from what happened to her um, mentally and physically. Um, it's a whole thing. And um, so I don't know um, if her, how long her and the boyfriend stayed together. Um, that information I do not have, because again, we don't know who the boyfriend is. Mm -hmm. What we do know is that mm -hmm. Um, after, uh, so the, the victim ends up, uh, uh, you know, <sighs> healing a little bit or trying to just move on and, and live on, move on with her life. And then Cassie files her lawsuit after Cassie files her lawsuit, the boyfriend or ex-boyfriend or whatever, um, it tells her that after the, after what happened, but before Cassie filed the lawsuit at some point, um, Diddy showed the guy, uh, the boyfriend, and some more people that were there, a video of the attack. Mm. And so the boyfriend, again, he had already known that it happened, but now he's watching a video of it because it's on a camcorder and they just have it out and they're showing it. And um, 
the then there were people around like the the other men that were there are now talking shit to dude about man that's your gal mm, mm, mm. couldn't be me you let diddy do that so um, pretty much once she learned that that was happening, uh, that, she, that that had happened, like it just was like her being victimized all over again. Um, and she um, sought counsel. Now, her attorney, her attorney is um, Gloria Allred. Gloria Allred has a daughter. Her daughter's name is Lisa Bloom. Lisa Bloom is the, the attorney that is representing Don Richard. So Gloria Allred and Lisa Bloom are um, civil rights attorneys, feminists, uh, and, and, I, and I say feminists because they do call themselves feminists. This is not me just saying that. But what they have done, um, they're at, at, on the surface, what they have done is they have fought for women who have been victims of sexual assault, especially the high profile cases, including um, the Fox News scandal, Harvey Weinstein, um, Bill Cosby, R. Kelly, Donald Trump. Right. So those huge things, right, those huge, those big ones, they are the ones who handle those cases. So. What's wrong with this? I'm not going to say that something is wrong. I'm going to say I'm paying attention. Um, so Lisa Bloom um, was previously an advisor for Harvey Weinstein. Um, she ended up um, resigning from the position. Um, she says that really all she was doing was, you know, um, she was like a consultant on, you know, appropriate and inappropriate things that should happen in the workplace, et cetera. Um, Gloria Allred, who again, who has represented women um, for. Um, those that sleep, yeah, we part of Just Posted Podcast, man, the best show on this network. Come on, check, girl. Seriously, man, Just Posted. <laughs> It's just me and those just sitting back talking about what the fuck going on in the world. Yeah, we said labor of love. He said labor of love. I ain't say that shit. Shout out to, uh, you know what I'm saying, everybody coming to watch, though, man. We really appreciate y'all. Holla at y'all later. Hey, man, this nigga just tall for no reason. I'm gone. Please. do regular jobs. Don't forget that. for like represented women who accuse Weinstein, uh, represented women who, uh, like I said, Bill Cosby, Trump, all of these, these high profile cases. But at the same time, she was, um, there was a situation of her being, uh, how do I say this? She essentially profits from some of these victims. Those mm -hmm. NDAs some of these women sign are made by attorneys. These ironclad NDAs or these NDAs that are given to sexual assault victims after the settlements, right? How they have to keep their mouth shut. She's, her people, she's created some of those. So um, it's, it's weird to say there's no lawyer who's just completely clean. What I will say is that I wish they'd have got um, Cassie's attorney. Mm, why do you say that? I I feel like like again, there's Cassie's attorney was uh, again that her or her her law firm um, was another prominent law firm that deals with these same types of cases. It's like a brother like Tyrone or something, right? And he got it's like a brother brother name too, right? Like Tyrone. I, or something. Yeah, I don't I don't don't give me the about who the yeah because I know it was like the same person. She's the it's the same person to do Laura Rod too. I believe it's her attorney. So, yeah, it's. Uh, Tyrone Bingham's attorney. It's something like that, like Tyrone Johnson. And you'd be like, dang, boy, you must be thorough if you didn't got this yeah, far with the a... name Tyrone Johnson. Like, yeah, 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 not T.W. Johnson. <laughs> no, you said Tyrone Johnson. You going hard, so you had to work. You you thorough. Hey, I wonder if his ad is, uh, I think you need to call Tyrone. <laughs> <laughs> like on the top dog wall. <laughs> If if they're not, then it's a missed opportunity. I yes. don't. I mean, actually, hold on. Let me find out. Wait, wait. What was the name of? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm looking at them now. Too. I don't remember what the name. Like, I really don't remember what, who they were. 
But um, but either way, like I said, I'm. I don't know. I, I I'm so just paying attention. Douglas, Douglas to, Wigdor. Douglas Wilder is her. I just don't want this to. I said, I don't know. Uh, again, so the the other part of this is so the with those two women. When I saw Lisa Bloom's name, the first uh, with Dawn, I'm like, why do I know that name? So in 2019, when everything went down with Harvey, or 2017, whatever it was, I just remember I was always listening to, or basically when the New York Times broke that story, um, I was listening to the Daily and um, a lot of podcasts about it, and really fully understanding what happens with some of these victims, and that's when I, that's pretty much when I learned um, that that these women would go come forward and be encouraged to settle because they're told you can't beat this. Um, and uh, so the fact that they end up settling or they, and they have to sign those ironclad NDAs. That okay. Like, Tyrone Blackburn is, uh, uh, is, is, is his name. Tyrone Blackburn. <laughs> <laughs> Tyrone, I knew it was some Tyrone. It's Tyrone Blackburn. That yeah. is the, uh, the, the attorney. Uh, and he's also an attorney on Cassie's case. Tyrone Blackburn, but he's on Little Rise, the head on Little Rise. But he's another yeah. he's a sub attorney yeah, in New York. <laughs> oh, let me see. What is so the the other thing is this, though, right? So the Southern District of New York, um, that <clears throat> the Southern District of New York is New York Bronx. Uh, yeah, Westchester. he's uh, 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 the name your thing, though. He, yes, he is though. Right. New York. So the ex Southern District of New York when they. When the U.S. attorney, when the Southern District of New York files a indictment or files a lawsuit, they don't play. Like they don't take. They don't just throw out law. They don't throw out these indictments. They don't. I just want y'all to click on Tyrone uh, the uh, law firm. I just want y'all. <laughs> right. So, like, yeah, but they don't just. Right, let me see Tyrone. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some of his notable representations are T.I. and Tiny. <laughs> no, against T.I. and him. Oh, well, either, uh, either way, well, it said, yeah, what says notable oh, representations? No, uh, so, gender discrimination, sexual harassment, or sexual assault claims against. But either way, it that's that's where it was. Um, so, but yeah, with the Southern District of New York, if they. When they file, they it is thought out. It is not just something they're like, oh, okay, where well, you go. Like, no, it they build that case. When they when someone stands on that uh, podium and is explaining the charges and going through all of that stuff, they have done the homework. Right? This, this ain't this ain't power. This ain't them fucking up in the courtroom. This is the I they, knew uh I knew New York was different when um uh, uh, what's the dude? Plaxico Burns got arrested for shooting himself. Mm -hmm. He did a year. Yeah, he did I a like, year in jail up in New York. <laughs> can't even can't even shoot yourself no more. Um, so, um, this is where we are right now. Uh, yeah, let's, let's talk about this book though. This Kim Porter book, this alleged book. Um, so the name of the author is supposed to be Jamal. Um, Hold on. Uh, uh, and it's been, and I'm gonna go somewhere with this. Uh, uh, when you when you find out the name, what the name means, supposedly. Hold on. Uh, da, 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 da. Where is the doggone thing? Okay, let me go to Ken. Let me just go to uh to the book it's on here because this is the number one book on Amazon right now too. Which is it crazy. is, and but no one can confirm that it is real. And did, right. uh, children and I'll be sure have condemned the book. Yeah, everybody's been like, dude, what is like, what is, what is, who? and he said, claims that he yeah. got it from somebody. It's a white guy too that actually wrote it, but he used this pen name. Uh, I'm trying to find it. Uh, damn it, where is this at? Did they take it off of what? Amazon? Uh, his book. Uh, what Kim's lost words? A journey for justice from the other side. Yeah, and all this is uh her law. Yeah, lost words, but it was Jamal something. 
Uh, basically, uh, hold on. All right. So Jamal is Jamal is supposed to be the name that people were saying. Jamal Joseph. Jamal. It's not Jamal Joseph. It's a name. Jamal something McCall or something like that. But the whole point is, is that that name Jamal is supposed to have been the name that people rumor when Tupac, they saying Tupac was still alive, that that was a name he was living under. That was why that name for that, the author for that book was so like salacious, like, okay. It's so using the pen name of the dude that the, num the name of the, that they claim that Tupac is using the assumed name of that he's still alive. And it's a white guy. Uh, I saw Martin Lamont Hill uh, do an interview with them. It's a regular white dude that said he just got a, somebody called him and said they had a thumb drive or whatever. And he's the one that put it out. Cause he said, supposedly the reason he believes it, that it was actually her writing is because there's some sex tape stuff on there too. With Diddy and her and some other people. So I'm like, and he saw, he said he's grossed a million dollars in two weeks. Cause he's, uh, it's only been out for two weeks. It's what forty five pages. Forty five pages, yeah. It's super short. It's like an essay. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, this can't be because it's man. not because it ain't. Yeah, it, it's like it, 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 they be, even claim it like all kind of stuff in there. Hold on, it's yeah, they changed the name of the author on here. Yeah, it's it, and it's one of those. Like I said again, this goes into the whole. Because the indictment shows those thousand bottles of baby, blah, 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 blah. And so now the idea of all the stuff that he, that are like, are reading the, not saying to put, we can't put anything past him, but because we feel like you can't put nothing past him, it's e like people are susceptible to believe the <laughs> false, the wrong shit. So, mm -hmm. even, so to that point, right? Thousand, the, the 1,000 bottles of baby oil and lubricant are stated in the indictment. If you go on the internet, people mention that, but then you also see someone say, did they also found 400 dildos in there? No, they didn't. <laughs> so they did, about Jamal, like Millwood. Jamal Millwood is the, post, is the pen name. Jamal Millwood, y'all, everybody. That's the pen name. Then that's supposed to be Tupac's fake name that he was living under. And it's mm -hmm. like, if y'all get a chance, go online, everybody, listeners, and check out this interview of Mark Lamont Hill and the author. And it's a white guy. He's on there. And he was like, dude, you a kind of a cult. You a vulture, dude. Like, you literally making money off of something like this that's not even in your culture of what you even know about. You saw a cash grab. And he's like, well, no, these people were trusted with the thumb drive. You know, she gave it to them or whatever. And I'm, a, and he's like, they trying to come out with a movie, all kind of shit. I'm like, God. Yeah, Damn. it says, yeah, a man by the name of Chris Todd, real name Todd there Christopher Hughes, Guzzi, according to records, is behind the book. He describes himself as a producer, author, and investigative journalist, and claims to have worked on and solved some of pop culture's biggest murder investigations, including Nicole Brown Simpson, John Bonet Ramsey, and the Zodiac Killer, among others. He also claims to have evidence that Kurt Cobain's suicide was actually a murder. They trying to put it on Courtney Love. He's trying to put it on Courtney Love. So, so he's crazy. All right. So, but I mean, hey, who knows, right? So Todd published the memoir under the pseudonym Jamal T. Millwood, a reference to a conspiracy theory that Tupac Shakira's 1996 murder was faked, and he is living under that alias. According to Todd, the alleged memoir wound up in his hands shortly after uh, Cassie filed her lawsuit. Two people allegedly close to Combs and Porter contacted Todd about the memoir. They said that they had her flash drive. I didn't ask too many questions about how they got it or where it came from. He believes that the memoir is real. And when pressed on who the sources are or how he can guarantee they had a legitimate writing supporter, he declines to give specifics on how he fact checked or verified the material. When asked if he contacted Rex for the signal or celebrities named in the book, he says that their teams ignored him and told him to kick rocks. I can see that. <laughs> now that I, I absolutely believe that happened. Like mm -hmm. I fully okay. believe that. Um, and uh, if somebody put my feet to the fire and they said life or death, is that book real? I have to say, I don't know, but it's real enough for me. <laughs> mm. Some, sometimes you, you have to just put it out there. Maybe not a hundred percent of the book is true, but maybe 80% is <laughs> that doesn't get. So here's the thing though. All right. I just, I can't. 
So you've published a book mm-hmm. for money, for profits. Yep. And you are literally saying, I don't know if it's true or not, somebody gave me a thumb drive. <laughs> I have no idea. So, and if it's, and if the issue is you care about the truth being out there or whatever being out there, you could have just put the shit on a blog. Mm-hmm. Like why the, it's again, you're profiting from it. You're profiting from it. You are profiting from it. That's the problem, right? I'd rather, let me say this. I'd rather you profit from the website clicks. Mm-hmm. You get the right? ad money. Look, just like, hey, just put it on your website or whatever, right? And do a YouTube clip reading it, a YouTube thing reading it. It's only forty-five pages. That part, and we'd be done in a second. So yeah, it's a. I, I, as a um, as a fake graduate of the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism, <laughs> um, someone who has. You know, watched. Uh, you school in Arizona. You went to school at University of Arizona. Right. So, Arizona was, you know, so University of Arizona. So Arizona State has has the Watson Cronkite School. Mm-hmm. So I did apply. I actually did apply to go there, but um, either way, the or I'm sorry, School of Communication, not journalism. So, um, but uh, and also someone who has watched uh, the newsroom on HBO several times. Or it's like it's a ridiculous amount of times that I've watched that show. For me, um, it, it, even when I post things in the group, right, or anything that we report on this show, I make sure that the source that I'm getting it from is valid, right? If there is a something that we just want to talk about, maybe a reel or something that somebody posted, right? I still go and check to find the real source of what happened because I can't just listen to what someone tells me, right? I need to double check. And especially when something doesn't sound right, right? It's like, that's a little, hmm, let me double check. And I'm going to Google it. And either you're right or you're wrong. If you're right, I'm going to be like, oh, okay, you're right. And then if you're wrong, oh, well, actually, the answer is two, not three. One plus one equals two. And look, I don't like Diddy like like uh, at all, but I don't think this book is real. Scott, that book I mean, is the book is it's it is so far fetched, and even the writing of it, I feel like it's very Corinne Stephens. Ooh, <laughs> the uh, a confession of a video vixen. So and to and and what I mean by that because people may take that different ways why, or how I'm saying that I absolutely believe Corinne Stephens wrote her book. I believe that she didn't have any help at all. No mm-hmm. one helped her. She did it by herself. She got on her. She grabbed that compact Rosario and got on Word Perfect and she typed herself up on the word processor. Right and. <laughs> <Word> <laughs> And yep. so it's very, the book is very easy to read. It's a very, it's a very, it's a light read because it's very elementary, if you will, right? Like it's a middle school kid could have written it. There's not, there's no complex ideas. There's no big words. You're fine. Um, so when I say that the Kim Porter book mirrors that is because it's the, I, I, I can't tell you if I've even heard Kim Porter's voice. I can't even say if I've heard her voice before. I don't know if I have. I don't believe that this that you have you have heard it on the Diddy behind the music. She was on there. And the I'll be sure unsung. There we go. That's right. another one. No, right. But like my, either way, the way that the book is written, I don't feel that that's how she talks mm. or how she would say something. So that's why I feel that that is again, like even with me, there's a specific way that I write. And you would be able to kind of tell whether I said something or wrote something or not. And mm-hmm. like, and even sometimes when people tell me like, oh yeah, you said such and such, such and such, did it? You know what? I don't remember that, but it sounds like me. So I would say. <laughs> it, it sounds like something I would say. So I'm not going to say I did just like that. Uh, it's a clip of Lazy Bone. Um, it, something Fat Joe said or some shit. And he was like, I don't remember that conversation. But I invite, I, like, let's talk about it. Maybe it did. I don't know. Like, I, I don't remember. It don't really sound. I don't know. But like, like, hey, jog my memory. Maybe it did. I don't. I don't remember it happening that way. And some that's me. And like I said, with Kim, I just don't. I, 
it's fake. And the fact the fact that her family is coming forward and being like, because if anything, right, it's a. Uh, it's definitely, you know, uh, putting Diddy down. I mean, sure, and I understand that the kids are his kids, right? And they want to protect their father. But it, it I'll be sure is like, nah, that ain't it. This ain't what, yeah. what is this. Like, I don't like this nigga either, but it, this ain't it. Right. This ain't it. Like, nah, look, let's let's stick to the facts. So uh, it's, I don't know. I just, I, I, every day there's something. It's so between Diddy and politics. I can't anymore. I need a vacation. Like, I think after the election, I'm going to have to go. I'm going to take a vacation. Uh, my brain can't. There's just too much. We got Diddy and Thousand Bottles of Baby Oil. You got the fucking Lieutenant Governor of North Carolina on Black Planet in Nude Africa. And let me tell you something. <laughs> I want to talk about this. And I'm sorry. I know that this isn't a 90s thing, but this is a 90s thing because Nude Africa is such a fucking throwback website. The fact that they found his shit on Nude Africa is fucking hilarious. And I hate that right means now. They really hate you. That they and I hate right now that... I don't have the same network as I did in 2011 because I'd have been on Twitter and we'd have been laughing our asses off at Nude Africa. <laughs> My friends now are too sophisticated and we can't talk about that on Facebook because our parents are on there with us, but this is funny, okay? Nude Africa, nigga, are you shitting me? When they said it, like, and it's so funny because it's, it's all the white announcers or the white newscasters who have never heard of this and so it is blowing their fucking mind right they are like they're like he was on the porn site nude africa <laughs> like, and I'm like and i'm and when i heard it my eyes lit up it was like oh this is a throwback <laughs> that's a throwback and then they're saying like because and they know it's him because he used the same username on Nude Africa as he did on Black Planet, and that's how I knew we was dealing with the real nigga because <laughs> man, it was right, not same password. right like you like you probably, and absolutely using the same password on all of them. This nigga. Like, as much as you have let the, like, you over here now, you know, uh, shucking and jucking for the folks, but you were on Black Planet. And only the realest of the real niggas was on Black Planet. Mm How -hmm. old is this? You were about 50 something? Uh, let's see. How old is Mark Robinson? I don't This Negro. But it's in, it's the 56. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. So he was in his 20s. <laughs> yep. He goes on fucking Black Planet in the comment section. I mean, not in Black Planet, I'm sorry, Nude Africa in the comment section. But any, so move, it's like between that nigga and this, and some another Black person. Oh, shit, fucking Mayor Eric Anthony Adams. Like, fuck. It's been a day, okay? I can't, it's been a lot for me this week. So as you wrap up Diddy Watch here, does he does he does he get convicted? And if he gets convicted, how long he getting? Scott, I'm gonna go to you first. Ah, uh, he there forever. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't getting no. Damn, he didn't get no time just forever. Yeah, he ain't what? Yeah, he ain't well. He gonna be what 80, 90 when he get out. <laughs> All right, Stacy, you. I don't want to say what my prediction is because I don't because I don't want it to happen. Um, I. So here's the thing. The reason that Diddy was able to do this for so long was because he would videotape everything, right? Mm -hmm. So you are at this party um, and maybe I say this, you, uh, everybody's like, why does everybody knew something? Everybody knew something. Maybe, maybe not, right? So you got the show, the after party, the hotel, right? Everybody kicked it with Diddy. Everybody knew Diddy through a party, right? So you went to the, you went to the Diddy show, right? Um, you went to the after party. Right. So the after party, you went there, wherever that was, you went to the hotel and at the hotel, everybody is kicking it. Right. So everything, at the hotel, maybe people are getting a little freaky deaky, but it's consensual. Right. Mm -hmm. It's all consensual. It's all good. You may, maybe, you know, you feel up over, you know, this and that other. But then there's the after after party and that's mm -hmm. in the house. Right. But. Daddy's house. So let's say it was 20 people that was at the hotel. 
everybody that was at the hotel doesn't go back to the house, right? So there's some people that are at the hotel, they, they've reached their free limit, right? They're like, they're like, well, we're going to go to the house. And those is some people who were like, yeah, no, I'm going to go to my house. That's what I'm going to oh, do. Oh, I, oh, I got a room here at the Marriott, too. I'm just going right. to take this young lady or young man. Right. We're going to head on upstairs. Uh, see you when I see you. Got to go. Yep. Um, and then there's the other people who maybe would have gone to the house just to see what was happening next. But maybe we're told don't come, right? Or we're, we're, we're pushed away. And there is a... Um, Something I saw, uh, Torre uh, was recently talking about this. And essentially, again, it's the whole idea that everybody knew. And what Torre said is that people who would have stood up to him, who would have said, hey, I don't think that's right. They were get, they got pushed away. And the people who- The people with the real have, power, he was like, oh, no, no, don't, don't come through to this. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, and so to complete my analogy, the people who would have been like, hey, this ain't, this ain't cool. That's who left. They're like, that's who was at the hotel and went home. The people, and then the, the yes man are the ones who went back to the house. So you're at the house. So again, so you could have had someone who was at those, at, you know, at the, at the freaky part, like the freaky party, not the freak <laughs> out, at the freaky party. Um, and they, and they can they can't they can't speak to what, what those other things that happen right because all they know is like hey we did kick it it was it was a chick over it was somebody was naked over there and i know somebody was getting some head in the corner but you know that's i mean that's a typical friday night they just, that's what we do that's what happened, um, you know, happened in nwa days too <laughs> exactly so you could question them and they can say i never saw anything and be honest because they they did not see it and just so and to that point kendra who like from the Playboy Mansion, she said, I am not gonna say that something bad didn't happen. I'm saying nothing bad happened to me. And that, again, so again, that fair statement. So, but, so you get back to the house, people are now doing all kinds of stuff, right? Niggas is, you know, buying monkeys online and shit, all kind of crazy, <laughs> stuff you can't even think of, you know? And Diddy is secretly recording them. So he might have also recorded you at the after party when you was at when he was at the after party he was being a little freaky and everything and maybe your wife is out of town and you was in the corner with some little young lady and you don't know that he's taping the party so he's taping everybody in the party then at the after at the at the freak off he's taping that shit too so when it comes down to it if you try to say something to him like hey you was there. I got a playboy, a playboy, check your email. Right. Like check your phone real quick. Yeah. So I so he you use that what to you think, blackmail. What you think, now, what you think about right. Mr. Rock now? Right. So right, you block you blackmail from two sides, right? So you blackmail people with getting putting them in vulnerable situations and then um filming them and using that against them. And then you have the other part of it of like the people who like maybe it's someone who wanted to be on camera versus someone who didn't, right? But either way, there's still footage. So if you if you have that on someone, right? You like that person may not be as inclined to to speak up or so to come out and say what's the, what's, what's, what time you what you say you don't what time you think you get like what's the or if he does get, 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 or do you think he's going to get convicted? I guess it's the first question. I fear that he is going to feel like the walls are closing in on him. I fear that they, that because of who else may get named or be on videotape or people that fear that they may be named or on a videotape that this could be a Jeffrey Epstein situation. Mm. Mm. <clears throat> so that's that's my fear. So like that's why I mentioned like him taping people and all of that stuff, right? So again, like if he filmed the young lady who filed this lawsuit, if he, if he filmed that and showed her boyfriend, this is what I did to the girl. All right, that is our Diddy Watch extended edition. We'll have another one next episode. Something gonna happen. Something gonna happen tomorrow. Gonna happen. Bruh, it's every time, every damn time. I, 
before we when we get off this thing and actually let me get on facebook right now and do a quick scroll because make sure before we I make sure <laughs> Make sure we ain't got right. no break. Last time, I think mean, we literally logged off and some shit happened. Mm-hmm. So it's you know, it's just every time, every day. It's day. every time with Diddy. Anybody else is regular news, but Diddy is happening like right after we record. Right. It's a whole shit, y'all. So Janet Jackson's having some issues with Kamala Harris, y'all. Oh, yeah. Uh... <sighs> y- y'all know I'm a, a Janet Jackson stan. This is on this is on her PR and on them like not just canning this article beforehand. If she did say this, you said she like, didn't say this. Yeah, I'm saying she did say that. I think she did, but I'm just saying no, your PR could so, be like we ain't coming out with this article. Like you, we ain't doing that. So, um, for those that don't know, if you don't, uh, Janet Jackson did an interview with the Guardian, um, which is a, a actually a, a UK paper, um, but well. I don't say you. I'm say Europe. Say Europe, because I don't know if it's UK or EU, and I don't want nobody to get mad at me. That's over in Britain. Um, but um, they, she was asked a question um, about her feelings of uh, possibly having the first black woman president, and uh, Janet said she's not black. Um, she's like, that's what I heard. I heard that she's Indian, and then the guard, the Guardian reporter. Um, was like, well, no, that's not right. And then, so essentially, Janet Jackson repeated some of the lies that uh, Trump and his followers, his MAGA followers, have been stating. Um, we can dig into whose fault it is, but the reality is, one thing that we know for sure is that Janet has been removed from regular life, her entire life. She's yeah. never had a like, like, she, like she's probably never even voted. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. She Janet Jackson has not had a regular life since they moved out of Gary, and she is the baby. So um like, <laughs> exactly. So she didn't get to, she doesn't have this regular life. So essentially, and it was like, what was it a couple of years ago? It was some she didn't know what like the you know, hot, hot Cheetos were, right? So and for everybody, it's like that's crazy. How can she not know that? She's been rich. She's been she's rich her whole life. And let's keep in mind, y'all, her, she just lost Tito too, man. Like, you so, know her. But, well, I'm saying aside from that, right? So my point of all of that is she's removed from the world, right? She's mm-hmm. not doom scrolling on TikTok all day. So whatever she says is because of, is what people are telling her, right? Her people, people that are around her are saying these things. And mm-hmm. based on, because she said, that's what I heard. I heard that her father was white and uh, she's not black and this is another. So like, the, I heard that she's Indian, right? And that her father is white. And it's like, no, none of those things are true. But again, that's how misinformation gets spread is because you, you all you need is someone who's not familiar with what's really going on. And if I trust you as my friend and you tell me this, why would I think that you're lying to me? And the fact that she repeated it, the fact that she literally said it to a reporter lets you know that she didn't think that she was wrong. Mm -hmm. She didn't think that that was pop like a like a maybe. She thought it was fact. She's like, she's not black. And then I I just found out who Kamala was. (laughs) (laughs) Right. But what's interesting on the flip side, though, Stacey, is that you have all these Kamala haters or, you know, Saying like, I stand with Janet, you know, and all this stuff. And the interesting uh, part about this, these are the same dudes that used to trash Janet because she was dating the French dude and then dating the uh, Arab dude as well. Like, Janet don't want to be with us. She only like light-skinned or white people or whatever because she was the little French dude that was holding her uh, breasts on the oh, front of the, the Yeah. Oh. yeah and, and, and then, or the, uh, it was Rolling Stone, I think, right? That was yeah, uh, Rolling Stone. So yeah, yeah uh, and, and, then, and then she yeah, her, had a baby by the uh, Arabian Prince dude. I'm like, well, that's, Rolling Stone, the guy that was holding her breast was her husband. That was Renee. Yeah, but I'm saying, right. but they would be hating, talking about uh, she don't even like brothers though. They was these the same dudes that's now like, man, yeah, Kamala ain't black. I'm like, didn't you hate and say talking about her Renee like 30 years ago? Right. Same and dude. Then it was a debauch for a hot second. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Like, let me say I mean, this. even Bobby said it though. Bobby did say that she did have a color complex though. Uh, <laughs> I mean, her parents like, said that she said she couldn't like, be with him. She, she let Jermaine Dupree smash. That was later was, though. 
That was later. Even still, if you look, if I'm light, I'm light till I'm light and bright till I die. Like, I mean, now, things changed after Justin Timberlake. That's what isn't that when Jermaine Dupree got her? Is no, Jermaine Dupree already got her. Like, right. They're they're right. Already, you're, they're right. Already you're right. Together. You're right. You're right. They're you're already 100 percent right. correct. He's yep. backstage. Yep, you're right. Thanks. You're right. So, but also another thing. Although Janet has um produced music uh that or, or put out albums or songs that talked about injustices and things in the world she also grew up a devout uh, she, she also grew up with Catherine who is a devout Jehovah's Witness mm -hmm. Jehovah's Witnesses do not participate in politics mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. so and the reality is is that racism is not a political issue like it's a, it's a social issue, right? And we, it becomes a political issue. So it's a things that she may have spoken out against before may not have been because of politics. She may have spoken out against them because she just felt that it was right. So if she's spoken about, again, racism or um, mm -hmm. uh, LGBT rights or whatever, right? I mean, her all of her dancers are, you know, whatever. So yeah. it's a, uh, her... Her Look saying, at the Miss You Much video, y'all, and just tell me all them brothers ain't uh, LGG, uh, uh gay. <laughs> the so Miss You Much video, the black and white one. Uh, <laughs> sorry, it's like, get it where you been, hey, girl. And then it's before, and it's as a kid, you didn't think that they were gay because you was like, oh, man, he just dancer. You look at it again as a grown man and knowing, like, life, you like, oh, man, all these dudes is gay. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying, like, as a kid, you like, they just dancing with Jen and nothing. I love what they doing though. You know mm -hmm. they do. <laughs> I miss dancing. too much too. <laughs> to get yeah, they got to give a Jen. They got to cut Janet some slack, man. On that, yeah, and y'all can't just be riding with Janet. And you know, you y'all didn't like her and, and went in on her because before about the blackness thing, like that. <sighs> that fight. It's a uh, so it's, but it to that point. That's why you kind of got to be careful with celebrities and their endorsements because one book don't know what they talking about. If you if there's a celebrity that has never ever talked about politics, and again, I've only been in, I've been very very involved in politics for the last two weeks. Okay, <laughs> um, just every four years. <laughs> less, bro. Very, I'm extremely involved right now because it's a shit show and I can't move. I I I, I have to watch it. I, it's a it's a it is a dumpster fire. Like every day, it's something. Mm -hmm. So it's amazing. But um, it's what, you don't. Every celebrity doesn't need to give their endorsement of something or a political endorsement. We we get mad that celebrities don't speak up, but then when they do, like we have to remember they are still at the end of the day they're still regular people. And just because they're talented, just because they can dribble a ball, just because they can sing or they can rap or they can do whatever, does not mean that they are intelligent. And we don't necessarily want to hear, like there are some people I would, uh, that I know are involved or have um, the emotional intelligence to, to, to have these conversations. Y'all yeah, really want to know Drake's uh, po of a political uh, stance. No, no, I, no. I, I don't want to know who he's voting for for parliament in Canada. I don't care. Right. <laughs> okay. uh, but Josh uh, Trudeau. Right. I, like that, some stuff we don't. Like I said, some people I would not want to hear from, um, and others I would. Like you know, I'm like, okay, well, what do you think about this? Or especially again, there are some people who are um, who have definitely been um, more outspoken than others, but at the end of the day, make your own decision based on your life, not somebody else's. Like but, Dave Chappelle, Joe, you're like, where's Ja? Exactly. <laughs> That's what, where we are right now. You know what Ja say? I am waiting for Ja Rule to come on the set too. Did y'all see that commercial Ja Rule was doing? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And I heard they're doing the fire festival too <laughs> in April. Oh wow! So this is coming. Damn. Yeah, it's, it's a real thing. They bringing it back. <laughs> it's it's one of those things of I wish that I had money because I totally have to, like I would I spend the money to go like I or like I need. I need to find a new job, somebody to sponsor me to go, to pay for me to go and be on the scene and, and, and see all this stuff because it's insane 
that like there's no way y'all did this already and then oh shit wait a minute i'm sorry my brain where it just went thinking about scamming ass events did y'all hear about the bridgerton shit in detroit i'm sorry oh, what oh, what is it this okay, now? all right all right hold all right. on let me google this what so I'm what sorry, is it called? Sorry, sorry. okay 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 so the show Bridgerton, right? Yeah. There are a lot of people who love this show. They love the whole Victorian age thing and all the stuff in the castles and all of that shit, right? Fine. I don't watch it. Whatever. Big whoop. There is a Bridgerton experience that Netflix and the creators of Bridgerton do. They've had these different events where it's like this huge, um, uh, it'll be like, it's kind of like a big gala, but like it's an experience. So you're going to pay some nice money, but you are um, going to have carriage rides and everyone is extremely dressed up, right? Like they are, like I said, during that time period, um, there are uh, essentially you, you're in Bridgerton, right? That's the experience that Netflix and Bridgerton creates, right? So, which okay. makes sense. Somebody in Detroit decided, oh, we're going to do a Bridgerton ball here. So, they... Oh, so this is unsanctioned. So, this is not the, the Netflix... It is not affiliated with Netflix. Of course, it would be done if you did it. was course. Oh. It was of not course. affiliated with Netflix, nor... The but, of course, it would be Detroit. It'd be Detroit, Chicago, or Atlanta. So, Those are, or St. Louis. Those are your city that yeah, somebody will do this. <laughs> so the uh, it gets Baltimore advertised. too. Baltimore too. Right. So oh, you have to like you uh, tickets were at least a minimum one hundred and fifty dollars. Right. So one hundred fifty dollars okay. at least. So that's like that was bare minimum. And then there were additional add ons you can get. So again, with that carriage ride, or if you wanted, uh, there was a dinner and all these things. Uh, there was supposed to be this whole big thing. And because people had seen the Bridgerton experience before on, uh, they'd seen videos of it. They said, "Well, hell yeah, I'm gonna go." Because they don't realize, like, oh my God, they're bringing it to our neck of the woods. Hell yes. So it was supposed to be like in, in August, but it got canceled. It, it, like people found out it got canceled like a couple of hours before it's supposed to happen, right? So think about this, right? If you are going to this event and everyone's in costume, right? It's a, it, it's a themed event. So you probably have gotten your hair done. You have this gown, this crazy all this shit and then you find out a couple of hours before that it is canceled so i if you rented it i i guess you got to go return it and go get it again but they rescheduled it and it was like last weekend or something they go people get there and they walk in it's damn near a bear gymnasium right it's like, it's, bar, it's, like it's horses and carriages outside they got this cold it's cold chicken and shit, and it is who did this? Who is, is, the, is it? Black promoters in Detroit. So, is black promoters. It's it I is. don't know who it was, but then apparently, but somebody said that I guess whoever the promoter was, they had done that before with another event, something else. But oh yeah, if it, it it's all over the Tiki Talk. Uh, I he's actually yeah. there, and the new Detroit News actually like reported it. Like that's who, like that's how I found out about it was because it was actually a news article. Yeah, USA Today got it. Like, damn. Yeah, <laughs> they went to prime in the seventies. <laughs> right, it was. Mm. Yeah, oh, this is crazy. I want to know who did this though. Somebody, they, they said. I'm reading this article here. People drove from Cincinnati, Indianapolis. Because it was in the neck of woods, like you said, like oh, they normally doing a probably with L.A. and New York, normally the normal thing, I'm assuming, right? Or yeah, they got a big thing in the Midwest. The New York Times headline reads: They were promised a charming Bridgerton ball. They got a pole dance. <laughs> oh, they got a pole dance. That's what it says. It was a terrible event that was poorly planned, way too expensive, and ultimately a big downer, Tendi said. But was it as bad as the other terrible event that was poorly planned, way too expensive, and ultimately a big downer? Uh, so they're taking, oh, the other one was they had done, there was a Willy Wonka chocolate experience in Glasgow in February, which apparently was also hella fucked up. So that was the first, that was the one, that was the first scam they, they ran. Right, so I don't know if it's the same company, but I think people are comparing the two. Um, but yeah, it was that was a whole situation. Hey, hey, this is black man, the name of the company is Uncle and Me LLC. <laughs> and they, they the they go the, the, uh, the wire experience. <laughs> Nick. Uncle and Me LLC. Yeah, like I say, I think I want to say I found the I think I found the original um 
I think I found the original video on TikTok advertising it. And but it's like, oh, this is the experience that you'll have. And even though I think it wasn't, uh, oh, wait a minute, no, there was a poll in the I found middle it. of the day. I found it. I found well, it Instagram. There was a poll Hold on. in the middle of the dance floor. Like, yeah, and there's New York Times. I found an Instagram, y'all. They black. They black as hell. They, 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 they didn't got over these white folks. Click on that. That's Uncle and Me LLC. <laughs> and they show mm -hmm. that they advertising it on there. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yep. These niggas got 10 posts on their page. Yep. Oh, they got a website. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, it's so, down. It's down. Damn. That's I'm, I'm telling you. Been, I can't take any more this week. It's hey, been man, a, I'm, I'm a part of me feels good about this now. <laughs> Since I found they was black, I'm with them now. Uh, this is some janky promoter shit. Nah, I'm with it. <laughs> Uncle, dude, they knew what they they knew they was running the scam from the beginning. Like you said, they got ten posts on here, and they and did it before. Uh -huh. But they look did at the other before. event, Motor That's City tough. Summer, uh, festival with Skrilla Baby and Des Dior. Now, I don't th nothing wrong with having Skrilla Baby and Des Dior in an event, but those in a Bridgerton event promoters don't align. The fact that they was able to get this over <laughs> and they did a Skrilla Baby event previously is amazing. This is amazing. This is amazing. <laughs> yeah, the, for $150 a ticket, attendees of the Detroit Bridgerton theme ball would attend an evening of sophistication, grace, and historical charm, according to the event's website. Experience a night like no other filled with music, dance, and exquisite costume. Oh, wait, hold on. Is the website still up? No, it's gone. Oh, it's down. Gone. But <laughs> them <laughs> niggas uh, took that shit. Did you know so? But uh, the event piggybacked off the popular series. Blah, blah, blah. So the reality is um, they have a pole in the middle of the dance floor, a stripper pole in the middle of the dance floor. Pictures of the event showed attendees sitting on the floor, checking their phones with little else to do. They also showed cheap backdrops where there was, uh, if there was any decor at all. Uh, so... Yeah, every they said every backdrop looks like it came from Party City. And yeah. so yeah, the fact that and I know I'd be pissed because again, if I've seen videos of this experience online and then it I find and I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the show and I'm like, man, I would love to be able to do something like that. And then it's coming to Detroit. Oh my gosh. That's like that's literally like them telling me there's gonna be a MASH experience. And I get there, and it is not a it's man. A, uh, it's a recruitment fair. <laughs> it's a recruitment fair for the army or some shit. <laughs> they it's got a recruitment fair. <laughs> so, let me tell you something. Watch what happens live. I it's gonna be a situation. Y'all gonna hear about it. Y'all gonna hear about it. It's gonna be Scott calling Daryl and be like, "Boy, turn on the TV." And they and they made her sign papers to join the army. <laughs> local Dallas woman. <laughs> like that's how it's gonna start off. Local Dallas woman. Um currently <laughs> in custody after <laughs> situation at Yo, Mash Theme Festival. I thought she was going to a MASH convention. <laughs> I thought she was going to a MASH convention. <laughs> She had been posting on social media for weeks, excited about the idea of being able to join with fellow uh, 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 watchers of MASH to, to talk about the people of the 4077. What she, she got there, she <laughs> greeted. You know, all, yeah. all right, next up, uh, this was interesting. The, the creation of the running man. Someone did a running man. Out. One of the most famous street dances of all time. And according to Wikipedia, it was brought to us by this lady. Huh? <laughs> you done lost your mind, boy. It's kind of true. We commonly associate The Running Man with people like MC Hammer and Bobby Brown. But the first time the move was broadcast to the masses was actually in a Janet Jackson video. Now, according to Janet, the person who introduced her to the move was Paul Rabdell. That's not where it stops. Oh. No, you gotta keep going. You see, Secret lies in the movie coming to America. 
All of the African dance scenes you see in the film were all choreographed by Paula Abdul, which of course involved studying hours of African dance. Aha. Who the fuck are you? Because yeah. there's a video from a 1977 performance by African singer Fela Kute, where one of his backup dancers does this. Look familiar? Oh yeah, Paula Abdul also choreographed an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, The Running Man. Ah, look, hey, look, we say what we want about Paula Abdul. She's still, she's somewhat of a dance icon. Like, I've, I've said that before, that people don't, that she doesn't get the flowers that she deserves. I think that, I think a lot of people don't, I think they, a lot of people were introduced to her on American Idol, right? Some people didn't know her from the 90s, um, so they didn't know, or, or just, even with the, if they did know her from the nineties, they may have just only known her singing career, right? Like she's, she just had two songs, two, three, well, no, yeah, Rush, Rush, uh, and Straight Up. up. And, I was just uh, right. Yeah, so she, I mean, whoa. Or even, one, is that the one with the cat? Was opposite? Yeah. Right? yeah, that yeah, cat. yeah. And, uh, or even you know, Whitney Houston made a little comment kind of about her, right? About her not being able to sing. So if that's all you know, and you never knew that she danced, then that's why like you don't want to give her her flowers but people don't remember that she did choreograph that iconic routine in coming to america she did choreograph pretty much everything from the rhythm nation album yeah because uh like every video i think like wasn't she dating one of the jacksons uh or oh who was she dating <laughs> Uh, so just, was it Jackie? Uh, 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 Jackie? It's Jackie. It's Jackie. Yeah. She, she choreographed um uh torture. The torture yeah, video. Yeah, it was one of the Jackson. For a long time, torture was the, the most expensive music video of all time for a long time. Yeah. Because yeah, they had so much like going on. It, it wasn't because of the quality, y'all. It's, it's because of all the shit going on. All the shit going on. And it, particularly it, Jermaine it, kept stalling saying, I'm gonna beat her if y'all had these wings. And where's Michael at? Yeah, oh, I'm not gonna show up. It's my girl. Uh, I'm not coming. Is she an OG Laker girl? <laughs> yeah, she's an OG Laker girl too. Mm -hmm. Shout out to MC Scat Cat, who is Romani Malco. Malco wrote from MC Scat Cat. He's mm -hmm. the writer of MC Scat Cat stuff. Who they tried to do? A, they did an album with him too, which is crazy. But I think uh, Turbo they he, they used his body for the animation. For him. Yeah, but uh, but Romani Malco wrote it. Wrote wrote oh. his reps. Okay. Like, but this crazy thing about like, yo, Paul, yo, yo, Paula Abdul was in the mix, and she dated Arsenio Hall. Did y'all say that part? Mm -hmm. I didn't say that, but I know that she did. So like, there's a because when didn't they always mess with them about that? Like, yeah, know. it was it, it would get brought up. Like Paula would get brought up, or hell, on fucking um, Real Husbands of Hollywood. That's <laughs> they play on that. They play like Arsenio was living in her basement. Or something, right? Like, <laughs> like that's like that's where he was living. Like he couldn't live nowhere else. So that's. It's a, she's it's so crazy that she again she doesn't get those flowers but she been fucking with us for a long time since the 80s like since at least since, i mean like you know she was a laker girl like i mean all of this, like at least since the 80s she's been fucking with us for a long time and <laughs> um and, and and she hasn't and she never that's the other part she doesn't sit around talking about yeah i need to give me my flowers mm. she doesn't say shit about it at all, she she could absolutely sit there and be like, "Y'all my bugs, like I birthed a lot of you bitches." Did y'all ever watch that uh, that show Winning Time on the Lakers? And yeah, they added her character in there. Uh, mm -hmm. her I, for the Laker girls. He uh, Big Sip watched it. I, I like I've seen I've like walked past the TV while he was watching. I never watched it. Okay, but uh, it's it's one of those it's, it's saved on the list to watch. And now that it ain't coming back no more, I got time. Yeah. <laughs> Two good seasons. <laughs> right, it was like, like I was like, oh shit, let me go ahead and watch because I wanted to get ready for the next season. It was like, oh, it ain't, it's done. Oh well, shit. Ooh. Damn, I mean, she she choreographed. I mean, like, but from eighty four to eighty eight, she was choreographing a lot of shit. She was out there, like Paula was. Yeah. Paula put in work. Like it's, I'll say that's not. If, I'm not gonna say nothing was given to her, right? Let's say one job was given to her, but she worked her ass off on it and continued to get work. Like simply put, there's no way she'd have been able to continue to uh, choreograph for Janet if her if the shit wasn't right. 
Yeah. And she did five so, videos for Janet. Right, exactly. So the, or even like I said, with the coming to America, you think she'd have got, I mean, well, hell, with Arsenio, but yeah. still, they, if the shit wasn't right. Hey, but look, no. You know how dope she was. She wasn't fucking with Jackie no more, but Janet was like, I still fuck with this shit. Like, I'm yeah. hey, my sister needs you. Hey, how many times did Jackie call her? Hey, uh, is uh, Janet, is Paula with you? Like, yeah, yeah, she's over here. She she <laughs> How she looking? Boy, you better get off my phone asking me all that. So you called me off the set? I'm finna oh, come on. Y'all gotta remember now, this is before cell phone. So some, Jackie didn't call on a regular phone in the studio. Hey, Janet. Is Jackie? What do you want? Here's he want? He said it's important. <laughs> do you know how determined you gotta be to call somebody on a rotary phone that don't want to talk to you? At the set, at a set for a music video shoot. Shh. <laughs> 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 now let me at the dial long distance, nigga. <laughs> and, 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 and people don't understand long distance used to be local, depending on where you could be, especially in LA. There was like four, three or four air codes back then. That was still long distance. Yep. He calling from Encino. They doing it in uh Hollywood, the music video in Hollywood. Uh what uh what's up, Jackie? So no, no, so is is Paula there? So, boy, you called me off the set all the way over into the back into my trailer to ask me about Paula. I was just letting her know she had left her shirt over here and she wanted me to bring. <laughs> Boy, you ain't messed with her in three years. That nigga was calling collect, and when they, he had to say his name, it's Jackie. I'm on the way. <laughs> and, and look, and Janet had to tell her like, "Hey, Jackie, on his way. You might want to leave." <laughs> that is gonna take a while. Like, yeah, you had to press zero operator. I like the place collect call. That Who you trying to call, Janet Jackson? Yeah. <laughs> she my sister. Cause like he like so eighty four is torture. She started uh, choreographing for Janet in 86. So there's a two year, because I, I, she only messed with Jackie for a brief period. Hmm. She literally came back and was yeah, like, she, wait, uh, Yeah, so, yeah, because she did, What Have You Done For Me Lately? Like, so that was eight. That was eight so. It's all the, the songs from Control. Yeah, so she, she did Control and, so Control and Rhythm Nation. Rhythm Nation, yep. okay. Nasty, When I Think Of You. Yeah, so those, those iconic Janet videos, that choreography that we knew and loved, Paula. Thank you, Paula. Paula Thank you. Now. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't know she did the coming to him. I always thought that was Debbie Allen or something. No, mm -hmm. that was Paula Abdul. No, that was Paula. Like, yep. Like, now it could have very it easily have been Debbie. Yeah, but, I, always, yeah. I always just thought it was Debbie. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, like it absolutely could have been. It could have been. But, uh, hell, it was. Well, no, because she wasn't. Well, was Fame still on 86? Because Janet, Janet wasn't on Fame. When did Fame end? Oh, about 86, 87, Yeah, I was thinking 84 or something. Uh, Movie came out in 80. TV show. Let's see. Uh, first episode, it was on from 82 to 87? 87. 87. Okay. So then that's why Debbie couldn't do it. Because she was busy. She was busy. Like that's that. Like that solves that mystery. Like yeah, the last episode was May eighteenth, eighty seven. Debbie was terribly busy. She and, and she was coming she to America from eighty six, right? Eighty eight. Yeah. So you got they were filming in eighty seven. So they filming in eighty seven. So she definitely couldn't do it because they filming back then, y'all. It took a whole year for a movie to come out. Like literally a whole year. Same with same with music. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she was probably getting ready for uh do uh, uh what's the different world <laughs> so, yeah so I was out I, I was on the way to that I was that's actually where I am right now a different world season two was eight it was October of 88 and that's when Debbie came in mm. so she didn't, she didn't have time for <laughs> like honey, I, 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 what, uh, the, what what a choreographer what now honey honey I'm I'm much I'm much too busy and, and on top of oh, Paula do a good job. That girl good. Who y'all got? Paula on this thing? That child will be able to do that. Don't worry about it. I got other stuff going on over here now. So, yeah, but it's a... Ladies and gentlemen, those two women in the 80s were extremely important to the culture when it came to dance. Mm -hmm. And so... 
Don't and forget Rosie Perez too. And Rosie Perez. Yes. yes. And Rosie Perez as well. And Rosie Perez as well. Those three women. Before J Lo. <laughs> yeah, those three women of color were and like so like J Lo, I mean, like make it let it be known that Rosie Perez is the one who was teaching J Lo today. Mm-hmm. J Lo was under her instruction. Um, so they were like sitting again, extremely important. So like now we have choreographers and we're thinking about uh, you know, uh, Lorianne and we think about Fatima, but before them was Debbie, was Paula, was Rosie Perez, who were doing. A was Big Liz a choreographer? Oh, she's just a dancer. I think she is. A, I think Big Liz is a choreographer too. Okay. And then, but, but, that's her only living single thing, damn it. Yeah, yeah. Let, let, big, let, big, let, big, big Les, right? Yeah, Big Les. I think she did choreograph. I yeah, think she did. I think Big Les is a choreographer. I don't know, um, like not like that. I don't, I don't, I can't think of anything specifically that she's choreographed. Like, I mean, well, I know that she choreographed her dance for Living Single, um, but I don't know what else. But I'm not gonna like. But I know that she's um, dope as hell. I mean, like she's. Oh, I mean, let's see the choreographer. Let me see what it, if it has anything for her. Um, oh, they say they say oh, that uh, the it's girls choreographed are- for Diddy on Mary J. Blige's first album, which is <laughs> and actually, I think I just I literally just saw a clip of Big Les and Mary J. Blige out right when uh, what's for uh, what's for when it come out, and I think somebody said something about Mary J. Blige couldn't sing, and Mary started singing to the woman. Like singing there, and then uh, Les was like, nah, 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 girl, stop, 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 because uh, you got to pay for the rest of this. So she was like basically bigging her up and like, my girl can sing, sing, girl. Uh-huh. Girl, that's enough. you ain't got to sing no more for her, bitch. So, uh, that, but I'm like, okay, she, but what song, what does she choreograph? Oh, we got to, we going to do a big lesson. She did around the well, way, girl. She probably did, you know, I'm sitting her tripping. She probably did fucking real love. No, no, she did. I'm looking at the work she did. Yeah, she did real love. She did a roundaway girl. Oh, uh, um, yep. Yep. She did a lot of she did a lot of stuff up to Heavy D, Jeff Red, Aaron Hall. Did she did poison. <laughs> well, no, no, those are the girls. Those girls, the girls, the three girls uh did all they curry guy girls. Uh, the uh, the poison girls. girls. Yeah, yep. Uh, I forgot they were named something. Um, because uh if y'all y'all ever see uh play. Uh, if y'all ever get you, I might be, I forgot where it is online, but Play did a uh, documentary on hip hop dances in the 90s. Play from I, Kid and Kid about it. I, I think I remember seeing that. I, know, I think I don't remember, I don't think, I think I knew it was coming out or I just was aware of it. It's good. But, it's very but, good. I, I, I'll, I'll, like, I'll look it up. Like if you, uh, I'll look it up. That, but GTI. It, the name of the girls are GTI. Right. So, but the, the point that we remember the dancers. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> That's how important this shit was. The fact that we remember the names of the dancers, that we know who Big Les is, that again, like that we know who we fucking know who Josie is. We know who these women are. Scoop and scrap. <laughs> because they were so important, like to again to the culture. In the 90s, we were finally seeing these people on the screen. I mean, and then to that point. The the we the choreographers who were behind the scenes in the 80s and then going into the 90s again, they opened those doors for these yeah. women to be able to walk through. Now I don't know. I mean, I guess the last girls I knew by name was the twerk team girls. I guess I don't know. Oh, especially <laughs> like when Michael came out with the remember the time and we see all the flag girls. And you see everything like it's like that was, oh, Fatima. that was Fatima. Yeah, that was Fatima. So and like I said, to see and the big Liz is in there, Josie is in there, to see the the these women. Oh, y'all gotta see the play thing. They talk about like the whole process of that video and how like it was all like secretive and stuff and like everything. They talk about it in that play documentary because he interviews Josie and um Big Les too. Mm-hmm. It's real good. It's real good. I'm I'm good. Like yeah, she's uh again, these are they were they had a big impact. Like I said, the fact that we 30 years later, we remember their names, right? And we can be like, oh yeah, she did this and she danced in this video. Remember when she was in this video, blah, blah, blah. And because that's how important they were to the culture. And which goes into why the fucking break dance and shit. It's called And I Dance, y'all. It's called And I Dance. It's the name of the documentary. Okay, I'm gonna have to look that up. Yeah, it's good. It was good, man. It was good. It came out out, like during the pandemic. 
I remember that. Okay. I just I remember watching that one on uh, Turbo. <laughs> they, they had one on him, the Boogaloo Shrimp. <laughs> yep, yep. All right, do y'all want to talk about? Uh, I mean, we don't have to. Y'all want to talk about Beyonce not being nominated for a country music award? No, so, I knew she wasn't going to get nominated. Yeah, yep. They didn't want her there anyway. Well, like, they didn't yep. want her there any damn way. Like, <laughs> and I don't think she's upset. The, her fans are more upset than anybody else. And they're, just, they're always upset. We ain't heard that country song since the album dropped. Now it's back in the <laughs> This ain't Texas. Ain't no hold em. Hey, look, and Dolly Parton was like, Dolly Parton was like, you ain't even come to Nashville to record none of this. Like, it's a, I mean, like, Dolly's behind it, but Dolly also said, like, yeah, they're like, well, what do you think about her not getting it, uh, nominated? She's like, I don't, she's like, I don't think it's a race thing. She's like, I just think this. Maybe they just not ready for a new company. Dolly was trying to be real nice about it. I mean, but Dolly was behind her. Dolly let her use Jolene. Mm -hmm. uh, first off, Dolly's just a national treasure. So mm -hmm. I'm just put that out there. We will not, we will not take any Dolly slander around here. <laughs> uh, period. Flat, like flat out. Dolly has done most black folks and most black folks have done. So let's just chill out. But uh, I, she wasn't going to get that damn fucking award. Yeah. She wasn't. Or somebody that we do love. Tevin Campbell breaks down actually why his third album, Back to the World, didn't pop and his career kind of start tailing off. This is pretty interesting. He talks about Tevin in 1991. T dot E dot V dot I dot <laughs> Tevin <laughs> in 1991. And then I'm ready yeah. in 1993. And then around your third album, things started to slow down. So remind me or everyone of, of what was going on at that period this is like around 1996 and and how did that sit with you it was a hard time for me because i didn't i didn't know what was going on but there were a lot of politics that was going on at warner brothers so i'll never forget showing up at the photo session for that album and i had the twist and they literally lost their minds it's like what are you doing what are, why are you doing the twist and then right after the i'm ready it was a huge fight with prince and warner brothers and those songs that he produced they couldn't do anything with those songs because he didn't allow it. So it was a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes wow. with me and Warner Brothers mm -hmm. that I didn't realize as a kid. Back to the World was a big, a big surprise for me. I didn't understand why it wasn't selling. Uh, I didn't understand why Warner Brothers wasn't concentrating on me as an artist. Yeah. Uh, but I know now. Ma Austin was there. Ray Harris, Hank Spann, all those people left. Those were all the people that made Tevin Campbell who he was, and they were black people. They started concentrating on the pop artists and the, and the pop music and there was a lot of changes going on with with r&b music at the time yeah. i also think it has a lot to do with just the child star syndrome they didn't know what to do with me you know it's a business Ooh. and uh the usher album also came out that year <laughs> How, there you go good yep. <laughs> yep i just wanted to get straight to the point <laughs> well well it's interesting he said the prince thing is that's when prince was going that's at Warner brothers yeah, that's, that's, that's actually that's a valid argument. Like now, yeah, like that was that, that was what made it the most interesting right. to me. When he said that, I was like, "No, okay, okay, wait, a I'm okay, I'm listening." Yeah, no, you're, like uh, you, you're gonna say something about they they, they, uh, they didn't push me? Like, oh no, no, you got you got a legitimate uh thing here now, brother. Go like, talk. You, okay, you, you might be right. Like that's but that's real. Like with the for the children at home. Uh, Warner, <laughs> there was a time when Chris, when Prince became the artist formerly known as Prince. He well, started, I call him Cap -Cap. Oh, yeah, that's I call him right? He was just a symbol, right? Because he felt that he was basically a prisoner or a slave to Warner Brothers because they were the album they had his masters, all that stuff. So with that going on, I can, and, and him producing most of Tevin shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could see how. He, he wasn't nobody trying to focus on his shit at that time. Or no, that you wouldn't get the rights for it. That was a yeah, thing. Like, like, I'm sorry, Tevin. Can't you can't use it? But but we recorded 13 songs. Uh, I can't do it. Yeah, man, it's the business. Well, it's on, wait a minute. Let's see. <laughs> so this album dropped June 18th, 1996. It wasn't a bad album either, though. Keep that in mind. It yeah, wasn't. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm reading the reviews. The reviews. Are with it, but let's see. Hold on. Uh, Back to the world is a dope ass song. Like the song is the title song is dope. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's see. See. Okay, so I do. I want to blame Usher, but I think I can't. <laughs> why? 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 Why you said that? 
Because Usher came out the next year, 97. Yeah. So Usher had so Usher's first album was out. Um, and again, it, Usher, Usher's first album is one of those, if you know, you know. It was a good album. Like it, mm -hmm. but most people learn about Usher with My Way, right? So let's let's go with My Way. My Way dropped September 16th, 97. Hit the lead single You Make Me Wanna was August 5th of 97. Uh Tevin Campbell dropped 96. And yeah, so it's a uh, yeah, Usher came out the next year. So it's a, uh, unfortunately, Usher has nothing to do with uh, with that Tevin's album not selling. Um, now, I will say that because of Usher's popularity, it may have been harder for Tevin to get back in. And then also, now there's that age difference. Mm-hmm. Right, so Usher is uh, the younger version of like Tevin's getting a little older. Usher's still a little young, so uh, but I don't think I'm trying to think they're different. Their age difference isn't that broad. Yeah, they, they, they probably like maybe a couple years apart. Yeah, they, 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 they flip. I think they the same. Now I'm sitting there like, are they the same damn age? No, Tevin Campbell's forty-seven. They're about a couple years. Forty-eight this year. You'll be forty-eight this year. All right, but Usher ain't. Usher's 45. So. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm like, dang, that much younger. I'm like, it's like, there, it's not that huge of an age gap, was, was yeah. my point. Like, it wasn't like it was like a 10 year gap. But uh, so Usher kind of picked up where Tevin left off. And then also those twists. That's, I feel like we need to discuss the twist. Yeah, and that wasn't the best move. Also affected album sales. That wasn't a good move, though. I was, yeah, the that twists weren't a good move. What, what, I, I want to talk to somebody, because seriously, how the hell? Did we let niggas do this? Because I was it is it because of old dog? Like old dog. I, yes. old dog kicked it off. Old dog then mystical with those same with those and same then, um, the son on um the parenthood. <laughs> <laughs> the oldest son. Uh, 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 Kenny Blank. Kenny Blank. Oh, and that, that mug was horrible. That mug, he that nigga had a had a bowl cut. Yeah, uh, wow, with we're braids. rocking those those bowl cut, like you said, them bowl cutting in the braids over the top. I'm, I am so pleased that dudes that I dealt with either had a low cut or a curly box. <laughs> that North County kitchen curl. Yeah, you, know, you had a low cut, or you went up to K cuts. Over on Ada Warley and cousins, right? No, not Ada Warley. Oh, cousins and um, oh, oh, she, she no. damn street. I know it's Horde. It. Horde. Thank you on Horde and uh, thank you on Horde and cousins. Right there at K Cuts, it was a lady named Paula in there, and Paula would give you your curly bob and or box. Yeah, that's right by the middle school. Yeah, yeah, like they had a middle school is on cousins. And yeah. Jennings is on. I mean, and uh, the high school is on. So my question, my follow up question to y'all: If let's say in a different world, Prince was able to produce some of the songs on there as they thought, do you think that would have changed this album, or was Tevin just not transitioning into the adulthood in general period? That his statement is like they didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. They didn't know what to do. Transitioning me from a child star to an adult. I think it would have changed it because he would have had somebody big behind him because he had Babyface. On the last album, and then Quincy, and uh, who Albie Shore and Prince. On yeah, the, Prince was on that too, though. Prince was on. Yeah, Prince was, first album. But I Prince mean, Prince doing more songs. Yeah. So and then like I said, hell, because yeah, Prince was on, yeah, on the second album. That was shush, shush. Mm -hmm. That's was it. That bad. I think yeah, if he would have gotten. Like so, with the songs, I think if the songs would have been better, or if he'd have been able to have that Prince backing, that the album would have sold differently. Um, I'm not saying that Tevin would have had Usher's career. I'm not saying that. I think that the album would have sold, um, and I think that uh, Tevin may have been if, if Tevin left the industry. Like Yo. I feel like I feel like Tevin was pushed out of the industry versus him leaving on his own terms. Prince produced oh. five songs on I'm Ready. Yeah. yeah. Like, so I think that with, I think if this album would have done right, um, it would have done okay. If if all of a sudden after this album, the record company stopped, started ignoring him and was like, okay, we dealing with, we only deal with pop artists, whatever. I think he may have pivoted in a different way. 
like, but at least this album would have done well. And, you know, uh, he, he'd figure something out. He just would have switched labels or something like that. But I think with this album not doing well. This um, would have been his, uh, like, new edition. This would have been his heartbreak album. Like, being mm. going into the grown man. Yep. Good mm. point. The teenage. That's, that's it. That is it. That is it. Uh, but when was the hell the... Yeah, this one, the, this, the, this, I said this album dropped in 97. What did I say? I forgot. Tevin was in 96. No, you talking about, uh, no, you talking, the, uh, talking no, yeah, about. The, uh, yeah, Tevin. So, I mean, yeah, he's like, so again, you got the first two albums are amazing. I'm ready. Like, I'm ready is, is a, um, it was a great album. And the song I'm ready is better than Can We Talk. But either way, right? He is going off of that, the goofy movie. That shit. And so he's he's hot. Ain't like we fuck with Tevin. And then, well, he came out with them twist. And I, I remember literally like a bit the video coming on and me seeing and that hair and being like, what what is <laughs> it got me thinking of that uh that episode of uh, Atlanta when they talking about the Disney and they like you gotta get Tevin Campbell. He's the hottest thing out. <laughs> <laughs> and that's real, and because that, that is, and that's such a real fucking statement. So just like now, and or I'm gonna say, well, I mean, yeah, now or just over the last how many years, somebody would feel that same way about Usher, right? That that, that make us say we got to get Usher. Well, look, that's what it was like for Tevin Campbell. So that's when I say, like when I said before that Tevin Campbell was the Prince of R&B, and then Usher came in, and people he was never the Prince of R&B. Okay, well then who was then? If it wasn't before, who was it? Tevin was, Tevin was that guy in the nineties. Mm -hmm. Like if, if it wasn't, if it wasn't Tevin, then who was it? It was just really like a smooth transition to go with Usher. You know, mm -hmm. it was it was a very easy transition to go from Tevin to Usher. And, and Tevin's more of a balladeer. He's not going to dance up there either, though. He just goes exactly. Sing. So, like I said, that's why. It's not a matter of like I said. It's not saying that Tevin's career would have continued on because he's not a well. He would have pivoted that way, so he'd have been with that class of the Joes and the Brian McKnight's and the mm. Donnie. That's where he'd have, he'd have been able to go. That yep. good a ballad, uh, singing ballads. Yeah, that's yep. it, right? A little up tempo, something from here to there. Yeah. But he's not going to be dancing. Usher dances, and that's what sets him apart. Because then the reality is, on the first album, Usher wasn't dancing. Look at the old videos. Look at Call Me a Mac. Uh, doing little grooves, right? Like he wasn't dancing. He was just grooving. Like, uh, think, and think of think of you. He danced a lot, and think of you with the silver jacket. But, yeah. He, yes and no. Compared not like not the hardcore shit. Right. Like, not the dance. Like, I was on Malia Rihanna type shit. <laughs> yeah. So not the choreography that you get, or not the dancing that you get from uh, "You Make Me Want." Right. So when yeah. that when that video came out, that blew motherfuckers' minds. It was like, wait, the hell ain't that the dude from before? Or and like when they pull up when he puts pants down, like every 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 dance crew that had boys in it. The Playboys. No. Basically. You remember the Playboys? <laughs> Hold on, the Playboys. What are the Playboys? It was a dance, like a dance group. They just danced to number like Usher, G, like whatever was hot. Yeah. This was this was a St. Louis, like a St. Louis local. Okay. Yeah. They yeah. So like, if there was a talent show, niggas was there. Like every, there were so many like I mean, there's there's a lot of dance crews now, but like it was everybody had a dance crew or dance team or something. And it was a thing to uh my was uh whether was, your dance crew was at VAP or the per the leader of your crew was at VAP. Because <laughs> you had to have somebody at VAP. Right. Somebody had to come from VAP. Somebody got to be a part of the choreography. Like somebody got to choreograph this shit, right? Yeah. So, and at the, at the talent shows, they were performing. That's what, and they the, the boys would perform. You make me wanna. The girls eventually would get to do. Are you that somebody? Yeah. It was either it was either you was in a dance crew or you was an Omega Squire. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it. Like, our capital leader. Our capital leader. We had activities. 
Junior yeah. No, look, you either you was playing uh, up at uh, Matthew Diggy's or Herbert Hoover or something, or your sister was a cheerleader up there, or again, yeah, at this point, you either in a dance crew or you working at the mall or you were girl team, Kappa League, or make work. That's what you did. That's how you filled up your time in high school. We or, found you worked, or you worked at Slate. <laughs> The slate. <laughs> your ass was, your ass was uh, in the summertime with a damn bow tie on for the su- for the summer internship program from the uh, <laughs> <laughs> making six fifty an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The internship program. Your ass was out there. Get and you a three hundred dollar check. Yeah, <laughs> living the good life. What a time to be alive. All right, next up, the lunatics is suing Nelly. Of course they are. Somebody oh said they suing um it's over D2, reimbursement. Think, right? Huh? It's more D2 they sue. Some okay, I'm confused about the whole thing. Cause some people say they're not technically suing Nelly, they're suing like Universal and D2 for what they did for their royalties. Then I've heard they're suing direct Nelly directly. I'm not confused. I'm D2, confused. that's the twins, ain't it? The- Used to be at Saints. Yep, they own. They had the studio at Saints. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, yeah. Remember when they first came out? D two. You know yeah. they uh, they were signed to D two originally, yeah. and Pretty Willie was too. Hmm. St. Louis Lunatics members Ali Murphy Lee Kiwan and Lavelle Webb. That's funny that they did it that way. But uh, filed a copyright infringement complaint against Nelly in a New York court on September 18th, alleging the rapper manipulated them for years by falsely promising they receive credit and therefore royalties on eight of his songs. It eventually became clear that Nelly had no intention of providing the plaintiffs with any such credit or recognition. Um, let's see, uh, not only did Nelly fraudulently represent to others that he was a writer and or creator of the songs, he also allowed other individuals within his circle to receive credit and publishing income for songs written by the plaintiffs. Uh, the plaintiff alleges that between 1993 and 97, the, the plaintiffs did most of the group song. Go to hell. I'm not dealing with this. I'm nope. Nope. <laughs> you not done? 97. Go to hell. No, I, I, I don't care anymore. I, now I don't care. Uh, <laughs> you are. Hey, yo, Stacey is never giving up in the middle of reading the deposition. <laughs> she said, I give up. <laughs> I got so much other shit. I got important shit to worry about. The y'all niggas worried about not getting paid for giving me what you got. I'm not doing this today. We're not doing this. Hold on. But I want to know is. Hold on, so hold on, stop, 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 stop. So hold on, they going back to give me what you got and trying to get paid? No, the going complaint back to 97. alleges that 97 between, is give me what you got. 93 and 97, oh. the Let's plaintiffs what you got. did most of the group's songwriting while Nelly's talent lay more in performing. In 2000, the Lunatics signed a record deal with Universal and Nelly did the yep. same as a solo artist. His album was set to be released first, so the plaintiffs started writing lyrics to what will become the eight songs in question, according to the complaint. Steal the show, Thicky Thick Girl, Country Grammar, Rap Something, Batter Up, Is You, Go, and Give Me What You Got. But Give Me What You Got is not even on that album. Give Me What You Got, that's before they was even on. They were still local. The complaint alleges between 93 and 97, the plaintiffs did most of the writing. And then in 2000 with the record deal. So they're bringing, so again, from 90. Oh, they're those songs are already done back yeah, then. Yeah, they're going through 93 through country grammar is pretty much what they're saying. So that's why I said, y'all niggas is not going to sit here and argue with me about royalties for giving me what you got. My question is, what royalties does Slow Down get? Good question. I hated her. Because he don't rap. <laughs> <laughs> My thing is, wasn't they just on tour with Nelly getting money? Yeah, with Janet Jackson. <laughs> they was opening up for Janet. Yes, Everybody but Ali. Though. There's Everybody some disconnect. There's some disconnect going on here that, that I'm thing just, is some like they are mad and trying to get reimbursement for the wings for the baby shower. And now these niggas. What's up, y'all? This is RVS. This is ROD, aka Rated R. We are the We Coming For You cast, and we talk about pro wrestling from a black dude's perspective. 
Tell them what they can expect on this here podcast. Oh, we're going to give you all the raw and dirty and the everything black from AEW, WWE, Impact Wrestling, and any other wrestling in between. If you want your wrestling unfiltered, uncensored, and you want it raw, you need to subscribe to the We Come For You cast. Right here on SOLC Network. The complaint claims that Ali, Murphy Lee, Kiwan, and Webb wrote, I love that they're not calling him City Spud. Like, that's, this is <laughs> yeah. They don't um, know. They just call him Webb. They don't even know his name, City Spud. Right. It's with the fact you're, call, you're saying Ali, Murphy Lee, Kiwan. And, like, you're, like, it's, anyway. They don't so, know who the other one is. That's what I'm saying. He was locked up. We well, only know who City Spud is. Was, oh, he just got out. Like, 2010. <laughs> no. That's just yeah, funny. maybe 2013, oh. maybe 20. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is just fine. But uh the it but the but like again, it's the fact that they're not writing the but real name for everybody. Else. Like Nelly's brother? Oh. Half huh? brother? Isn't City Spud Nelly's half brother? So let's see. I don't know. The question is that Lacey, the claims that they wrote all the song's lyrics while Nelly provided some lyrical arrangement and writing. They say Nelly never disputed the fact that they wrote and arranged the lyrics, and they claim to have video of their recording sessions, during which Nelly freely admits that they are the writers of the songs of Country Grammar. Country Grammar came out in 2000 and went on to sell more than 10 million copies. The plaintiff's only studio album, Free City, came out in 2001, sold more than 1 million, blah, 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 blah. The hip hop stars allege they were repeatedly assured by Nelly and his representatives that they would receive proper credit for the songs, but ultimately discovered in 2020 that Nelly had been lying to them the entire time. First off, y'all wait. Why did it take 20 years? Hey, Loki, this is Ali. This is all Ali, y'all. This is all Ali. So in 2021, they hired an attorney who sent a letter to Nelly asking him to make good on his promise to give them credit. Per the complaint, he denied their claims on authorship or joint authorship of the songs and said the statute of limitations had expired. So that's what Nelly wrote back. Nelly said the statute of limitations is expired. That's why I can't give y'all y'all money. Um, as a result of Nelly's conduct, plaintiffs have been completely deprived and continue to be deprived of any income, monies, royalties, or other form of re- a re- a re- I can't say it. Like re I can't say it. <laughs> Nelly hit him with the big worm. This money. <laughs> <laughs> it's remuneration from the distribution, use, commercialization, sales, public performance, or other exploitation of the songs via exploitation of country grammar. They're asking for at least fifty million, as well as attorney fees. Everybody want 50 mil. <laughs> I feel like you start off at 50 mil and if you <laughs> like 50 mil is just a common number. Oh, I had to get 50 mil. I'm at, like that's a that's a nice whole number. I'm asking for 50 mil, right? If you counter with 50,000, bet. <laughs> you said 50,000. 50 mil. If somebody gave me 50,000 right now, nigga, bet. I know exactly where it's going. Like I'm like, oh, okay. like bet, okay. Like like you go, you ask high, we, and then like if you counter me, like simply put, I know I'm not getting fifty million. I know y'all not getting me. But, I, but like okay, let's say it, 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 I'm I'm trying to think of it rationally, of the idea of like okay, let's say we don't win this lawsuit for this fifty million, and I could have been still getting money going on tour with Nelly, and been continually making more money. Now that stopped too, if this is all playing out the way it is pre- being perceived. Because Nelly's still going to be at a tour, and I could at least go get that five, ten grand a show check. But now that's going to be gone, and I didn't win this lawsuit. I'm trying to understand how it took y'all 20 years to realize y'all hadn't got paid. Because I know exactly when my direct deposit hits my bank account. Every time I get paid every Friday, like on, I get one check, one a piece of my money goes to my credit union and that hits on Thursday. So like on like going into Thursday, that hit. And then on Friday, going into Friday, that's when but I'm confused. Day. Y'all were a group. Everything was at Universal. They're distributing checks. How is Nelly? Is ne- when was Nelly supposed to be paid? Like Nelly wouldn't be paying them directly if they're all signing Universal, right? 
I'm just trying to figure. I mean, maybe somebody is. I guess what they trying to. Well, I guess what they. I don't know. I guess because they some of their names wasn't credited on what the songs on. So they was so you saying maybe in the back end they supposed to get like back end money. Yeah, like, like royalties or something. Yeah, I, but it's a. So you didn't get credited for writing on the well, album. On better up, so they get royalties. They're on the actual song. So I'm trying and to so figure they, out how they, they, get, so they get. They get. But I don't think they get it as a writer though. Right, like I'm are they not getting the writing credit? Like, are they not getting the writing credit? Yeah, because I wrote my verse. I should I get those writing credits for that. But I is wrote Batter my verse. Up, is Batter Up on Free City? No, Batter no, Up is on, on Country, uh, Country Grammar. Grammar. It's, just on, it's only on Country Grammar. Right. So I just I didn't know if it was on both albums. That was my point. Mm. So you know, somehow it should be on both things, right? Mm. Yes. But if all right, so, so, somebody get the album notes. I need that I need yeah, album notes. <laughs> right. I need the album notes. And we I need to know what the hell the credit is. Like it's uh I'm pulling up now. I don't all right. I'm on the album. Let's see. I don't think it I don't know how City Spud is in this. City Spud is a uh, is made a producer on one, two, three, four songs. He's the only producer. Um he, City Spud and he has a writing credit on Greed Hate and Envy. Yeah, and everybody's got one on batter up. Epperson, Harper, Jones, Steve, Steve Blass, Willis. Who's the who Steve Blass? Willis. Somebody else. Um, Let me go back to everybody's real name. Hold on, wait a minute. Yeah. We know who uh, we know who got that. We know Je got his money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At least got writing credit on, on. So, oh wait, 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 wait. So, well, now I'm confused because I'm literally seeing all of their names is with writing credits. Yes, me too. So, I guess the other, I guess the reality. So, is the the issue is I guess I got the writing credit. Where's my check? But it's been 20 years. You can't. To my but point, wouldn't that be universal? Though, is my point that would give you that check, not Nelly. Because yeah. Universal should be paying those checks. That's like if I'm your supervisor at or, or at Ernst and Young, and you ask me for your check, Ernst and Young pay you. I'm the supervisor, though. Yeah, but the yeah. company is paying you your check. Yeah, I'm gonna just approve your hours. <laughs> right, I'm gonna approve your hours. You know, I'm gonna give you some extra time. Yeah. but they gonna pay you. It's just weird. This is just weird. <laughs> so I was reading an article from People. I'm trying. I need a more. There we go. I need a Rolling Stone article. I need more in depth. Uh, like People will give you the fluff version. Rolling Stone. <laughs> Rolling Stone will dig up in there and tell you everything you need to know. And that's what I. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Uh. Oh, oh, God damn, hey, why? Yeah, they're like, damn, man, I'm just trying to chill with my new son. <laughs> <laughs> but then, I heard they got a, a show for the baby. That's what I heard, too. They got a reality show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dang, this is weird. It's weird. I don't while the, while the same limitations are credited with both performing and songwriting on some tracks. The lawsuit against Nelly claims that the final credits undersold their actual contributions to the album and thus deprived them of royalties. For instance, Nelly's breakthrough single, Country Grammar, is credited to only the rapper and producing Jason Epperson. But the St. Lunatics members claim they were lyric writers on the track. Nelly allegedly promised to give them writing and publishing credit on multiple Country Grammar tracks, but never did. Every time plaintiffs uh, confronted defendant Haynes, he would assure them as friends, he would never prevent them from receiving the financial success they are entitled to. Unfortunately, the plaintiffs reasonably believing that their friend and former band member would never steal them, steal credit from the writing of uh, the original compositions, did not initially pursue any legal remedies. Again, it's been 20 years. Like that's from, anyway, formed in the early 90s, St. Louis 6, blah, 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 blah. blah. In a quarter century that followed, however, Nelly allegedly never made good on his promise to properly credit the St. Lunatics leading to the lawsuit. Despite repeatedly promising plaintiffs that they would fully, uh, they would receive full recognition and credit, uh, 
It eventually became clear that the defendant Haynes had no intention of providing the plaintiffs with any such credit or recognition. As Billboard notes, the lawsuit is framed as a copyright infringement lawsuit. They Manelli used St. Lunatic songs um, and not a legal fight over song ownership, as that is only protected by a three-year statute of limitations, and Country Grammar was released 24 years ago. So, so they're doing this with what? I don't, I, I don't understand. It. I'm not saying they don't have a beef and they may have those issues, but what is it benefiting you now doing that instead of trying to figure out a way to get money with Nelly now and continue your money? Hold on. So that was Rolling Stone. Hold on. Now I'm on Billboard. Uh... Shout out to Murph, man. I'm, I'm, I'm cool with Murph, man. You know, that's my guy, man. But I, I mean, I don't, I don't understand. Yeah, I saw it. I was like, damn, Ali got everybody on his side. <laughs> yeah. It feel like Ali is like was like, hey man, just sign your name on this. If we get paid, you're gonna get paid too. But like it's really Ali moving, pushing it. That's just in my mind. I may be totally wrong, but I just feel I have a feeling it's like that. So the current lawsuit is styled as a as an infringement case. Um, with the St. Louis students alleging that Nelly has unfairly used their songs without permission. But the first argument from Nelly's attorney will likely be that the case is really a dispute over ownership and thus was filed years too late. An attorney for the plaintiffs did not immediately return a request for comment. I got to dig. I don't. Yeah, we got to do a part I don't understand two. it either. Like, like I said, again, I have. Um, uh, you know, although I am a graduate of the Dick School uh, uh a law and order, Dick Wolf School of Law and Order. Um, I have, you know, stopped practicing law, um, and right now I've been really, really invested in politics. Um, so, as a political analyst, um, I can't really speak to this uh, case right now. Um, but if my ADHD takes me back to the legal world, we can deal with this. I just, I'm not there now. <laughs> I got other stuff to worry about. You get back after election season, right? It's after mm -hmm. after election season. I can. I, we'll, we'll come back to it, y'all. We'll come and, back. Like, just talk to me on November the sixth. I'm very right. busy. Our last topic: we revisit albums. This edition, it is the 25th anniversary of Donnell Jones' "Where I Wanna Be" album. Great. And that is what we are going to revisit this edition. Overall thoughts on it, uh, Stacey, on Dino Jones is where I want to be out before we start breaking down. Classic. Classic, classic album. Um, it had a lot of great singles on it. It had a lot of B-sides that were great. This was, I think... For most people, this was their introduction to Donnell Jones. They didn't know about the first album or mm -hmm. didn't realize, that, oh, that was him? Mm -hmm. That was his song? Um, but this is... Um, it's insane that this album didn't propel him into. Yeah, I don't know. To me, it's to me personally, it's in my top five R and B albums. I agree. It's, it's a really, it's a very, very good. Album. It's a complete album. It's like a straight one to whenever however many songs, no skips. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Right, let's start and, breaking. And, and I, there were only that's crazy. It's only two singles released from this album. I know, but you know about 30 songs on here. <laughs> right, exactly. And but I you think know what, Stacey, I just saw a video for uh because I didn't know it was a single, but uh it was a video for uh Shorty Got Her Eyes on Me. Yeah, they, that's what I'm saying. They don't have it listed on her, but it was it, that they did release a, a video for that and single. They said they did release that. Yeah, it's I was movie. just watching it probably like a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I was like, damn, that's a video for this. <laughs> mm-hmm. And a, a part of me And now you got me thinking, I'm like, wait a minute, do I know what that video let me I need like I need I need to see his current woman. I know, yeah, because what was the last single? This love. Yep. Yeah, how, uh, yeah I got here the music. I, I'm looking at the music video right now. Yeah. So what a fast free bitch. What's it gonna be? Sure they got eyes on. Me. <laughs> All right, let's jump through these tracks. You hold what you're gonna do. You know what's up. Yeah, I mean, party, get the party started. Yep. 
Um, I'm gonna combine this with the because they put the left out version as the last song on here, but like the, everybody only know the, with the left out version, so we're gonna say that's the number one on the album. Um, to me, this is the beginning of left out trying to get a little bit more sexier and more feminine to me. Was mm-hmm. this video? Yeah, and it's you like you, kinda, her, you ain't never see her really dialed up for real. She was right, like, right, right. <laughs> She was trying to change gears a little bit and didn't want to just be the girl with the baggy coat. Wearing heels, got her hair done. <laughs> yep, yep. And I don't know, did y'all have y'all ever seen her the, them perform this on the Soul Train Awards? Mm-hmm. Where she was flying down the wings and they got caught and like somebody had to come and uh, take them off of her. Yep. <laughs> she didn't get off, they couldn't get her off the uh, thing she flew in on on the wings. Well, <laughs> so, so they had to have somebody come on the stage and take them off her. <laughs> All right, so what I will say is this, right? So this, by this, by 99, right, when this comes out, the TLC is on fan mail, right? Oh, not, mm-hmm. sorry, not fan mail. Um, yeah, that's fan mail. Uh, fan mail. Yep. Yeah, fan mail. So, no by, and all that is out. yeah, so yeah, by, but this, by this album, though, they are a little bit more feminine. They aren't in the baggy clothes anymore. Really, with crazy, sexy, cool, they, well, no, they were still baggy. They just were sexy baggy. They just got a little more sexy. Like, like, they were like, so <laughs> first album, Hella baggy. Second one, sex more well, sexy baggy. So we we got on oversized silk pajamas now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but by the by uh, fan mail now we actually have on form fitting clothes. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, but the point is the, the no scrubs that dropped earlier in the year. So that was February ish, and then so by the time. Um, you know what's up, or not you what's up. Uh, yeah, you know what's up, it was out. She would have been, that's how, that would have been her style. Mm-hmm. That wasn't until uh, the single dropped in August. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. But, uh, it, I mean, just it's a great, it's just a good, it's a feel good song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's just so smooth too, and it's just like, you know, what's up, what's up, like, it's just and it gets you one and you don't got to dance this. You could just you could just two step to this one and just talk to somebody at the bar like, man, you know what's up, yeah. girl. Yeah. It's it's just this was that the vibe of what we thought club life was like. Yes, in the nineties. So the people would be like when they that, that, that meme now was like, I thought the uh, the way the um, the hot in here video, I thought that's what the club was gonna be like. No, the way that this video is, that's what I thought the club was. Like that, like everybody's just kicking in, and it's just the, it's just a vibe. Like that's it. That's what I was waiting to go to. And then uh, you get a clip of uh, Usher in his eclectic stage because that's when um they, he had an album that I don't think it ever came out. It, uh, they shelved it because I remember it was an ad in the Vibe magazine. He had like the little beanie on, and it's it, it's well, a clip he like getting his hair braided in the video, but. Usher was it was right before 87 on it was between my way and 87 on one. That beanie, that it. crochet beanie. Yeah. He had a crochet beanie on in the You Remind Me video, don't he? Yeah, but it was another album that was supposed to drop, but they never put it out. Because mm. I, I don't think it was really that good. And then they, they pushed it up for 87 on one. Mm. It, it was supposed to drop like in like 99 or 2000. It's called All About You. Yeah. Yeah, it's called All About You. It was, it was playing the 8701 album. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I remember seeing the ass. Like, oh, this got a new album coming out, but he dressing weird. <laughs> hey, all right. And then next up, we just talked about a little bit. Shorty got her eyes on me. Like, this is like, I mean, I don't know how y'all feel. Y- y'all feel as women, though, Stacey, but like, this song would be a song I want to play. I would want to play for a girl like, Hey man, I've been we've been friends since two girl. What you gonna do? That's when you play on that's the that's that's a song you put like if you on a date, you gotta put that in your RB mix. Yes. <laughs> yes. And you riding on the riverfront, but not the riverfront when it's popping. It's riverfront just with nobody down there, and y'all just riding. Yeah, you just on a cruise. This is a late night cruise. This is no, this is very funny because um, <laughs> like you know, so me and Big Sip, our second date lasts until five o'clock in the morning. Right. And we were literally sitting in the car listening to music. And I remember thinking to myself, I hope that he did not look at me and be like, look, it's a quarter past three. (laughs) (laughs) You've been fronting since two, (laughs) Stacy. What you gonna do? 
<laughs> and like, I, like, I, like it did because at one point, like, I mean, it started getting later and later and later. And I'm like, and I'm thinking to myself, like, yeah, like, I hope, he, I hope he know he going home. <laughs> I hope he know that he going to his house. <laughs> like, and I'm not going there with him. And I'm going to my house. And he not going there. So like, we uh. We had been driving around. Uh, we'd already been out like somewhere, and then we uh, were driving around, listening to music. We end up parking on the roof of my building, right on the uh, in the garage, and we just were sitting up there listening to music. And then I guess like, and it was daylight saving, so the time flipped. So it ended up being four. technically it was three, but it was four. So he ends up uh, we drive back down to my floor. He walks me to my door, and then I'm like, well, all right then, bye. And I like I went in, I closed the door, and he will, he will tell you how he really thought. He was like, oh, yeah, he's like, I'm in there. And he's like, he said, the way you close that door in my face. He was like. And he literally turned around and said, you've been front since two. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, I'm like, I said, I'm I like, hey, I said, I, I said nothing. I said, I, was, I said, we had a wonderful evening. I said, we held hands and everything and listened to some R&B. And you went home and I went home. Like, mm -hmm. does that mean that you come inside this house? Mm -hmm. Oh, so. And then Donnell comes with Where I Want to Be. Let me tell you. One of the greatest breakup songs ever. Yes. Now, y'all young folks is trying to shit on it now and everything. At that time, that was the first time we had an actual man making a full breakup song besides a new edition with uh, uh, you, uh, You're Not My Type of Girl. But that was up-tempo. But that was, that was a rejection song. <laughs> right, 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 like, right, and fuck, you're not my type of girl either. That's a horrible song, and we'll talk about that on another date. But that is a horrible song. I, I will, I will die on that hill about how horrible that song is. Where I want it's to so be bad though, Stacey. They, they didn't do an actual video. They just did a concert performance of it because you can't actually like show like a scene of yeah. Something like that. Yeah, they just like hey, man, just put on these. Imagine white telling somebody. Man. It's not the it's not the way you look. It's not the way you talk. It's not the way that you carry yourself. So, You're just not my type. I, so what's wrong with me? That woman is in therapy. <laughs> you get in therapy for forty years. You get in therapy for the past forty years because it's not how I look. Not it's how not I how I talk. It's not the way that I carry myself. What's what's wrong with me? We gonna have to do a deep dive on all the all these women that in uh, new edition to reject them. Poison can't trust the big booty smile. Like, how many big booty girls with pretty teeth? <laughs> like was out here losing. But no, where I want to be is an is a great song, and it was an amazing song until in ninety nine niggas started. So, tell the women like the high school high school shit was like you know like we've been together since freshman year and you know um i'm just trying to see yep. what i want to be this um, stacy this was the song to determine who you was taking to the dance <laughs> i don't know if it was prom season or homecoming i need you to understand how many women were dumped between yes. 99 and 2000 because of this. Song. Oh no, no, it goes no. We we could go to like oh four because they was. You know, say, oh, you can go. You can, you can go. Yeah, I mean, I said, like, I'm gonna say it continued on, right? <laughs> but the initial spike <laughs> was ninety nine to two thousand. I was. It went to two thousand. Prom dates, proms were canceled because niggas need to figure out. They needed time to see where <laughs> they, they wanted were. to take. Hey, they need time to see where they want it to be, right? <laughs> and all the girls, we just sitting at home singing, understanding, and get it together because I don't want to go and I don't want to stay, okay? And or you, he didn't found some new half and everything, and now he back. So you sitting around singing "Angel in Disguise." I loved you. I would never <laughs> do the things that you did. Take your heart and run away with it because I really, really loved you. And it's <laughs> and now it's interesting. Now I'm looking. Then he goes to have you seen her. Which is a song about a woman that he's been trying to get with. So he's left his lady. And the woman he trying to get with now, he, he asking her, hey. have you seen her? <laughs> but but it, it's a dope song though. But it's like, it's, it's like now I'm looking at the track listings, the way it's going. It's actually actually even crazier now that I'm looking at the way that the tracks because it starts off in the club and then you leave the club and then you want to break I up with the shit. <laughs> 
So this Friday, Chick he left the club, <laughs> came home, and looked at his girl and said, "We need to talk." Oh, because Shorty got her eyes on me. He yeah. said, "You know what's up." Shorty got eyes on me. I'm you breaking know, up, my lady. Man. Have you seen old girl from number? No, uh, no, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Back up. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Wait, you see wait, where wait. I'm going? Wait, you know what's up. Shorty got eyes on me. I just left my baby girl a message. He didn't go on. He didn't go home. He, he left her home. a message saying <laughs> I'm not coming home because I'd rather be alone. You know, because uh, I, I, I said she, I already got a short. Hey, this do, I I leave? Leave? do I stay? Do I go? <laughs> Hey, this album was a masterpiece. Now, this is and, then, and then obviously, and then like then he out with old girl. I mean, he, uh, he kicking with uh, the other bitch, right? Get some and realizes he done made a horrible mistake. Get and then I was thinking in the middle of the street singing sweet little Dee 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 Dee, and she out with uh, the dinner with Carl Kanai. And the fact that she was out with Carl Kanai, she just was like, okay, that that's that's the nigga that has been texting her and waiting. Yep, and Donnell the fucker, and. <laughs> He he that's had the nigga from work. Perfect time. That's nigga. That perfect time. And this is the perfect time, nigga. Hey, what's going on? You don't, you what? Know. So he ain't even come home. He just left you a message. You know what? Yeah, like, like, let me take you out. Okay. I would. I would have never done you like that. Like, let me take you out. Uh, you know, for a nice evening and everything. Get your mind off of that. And you can tell, like, as they sitting there, he's steadily talking to her, and she just sitting there. Just I think the video throws off this album listen because the next song after that is "This Love," and the first lyrics of "This Love" is, "Do you mind if I take this seat right here? Cause you sitting alone." Cause he dirty man, cause he no, got he a nigga at home. <laughs> yeah. So like this nigga is like he. Trying I, I think to, he look. He has not gotten an old girl back. This nigga is out trying to find bitches now. No relationship involved. We can keep it straight physical. This is a perfect r and album. You go through all the emotions. You go from single to getting in a relationship. I want, I want a bag. <laughs> he covers everything in R&B in this, on this album. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's his video. <laughs> yeah, like, this, like, that, that whole, the, the, this love is this nigga sitting there literally spitting game to her. The whole, everything that he says is him spitting game to her. Period. Do you mind if I take this seat right here? Because you're sitting alone. You know, if you're sitting on Crystal, girl, you know, I'm lying. And if you got a nigga, don't lie. You ain't got a front for me. Like, I can give you these digits and you can call. Like, uh, what's that? What you say? Uh, and hit me on my cell if I'm not home. He's like, now, are you down to swing it up with me? I understand you got a nigga that lives at home. <laughs> right. So, you got to tell me, or could you be blinded by all this ice you see? I'm willing to give you all this love that I got. He's like, bitch, I got money. <laughs> but, you know, no relationships involved. We can keep it strictly physical. I'm just trying to fuck. Right. <laughs> all this love is waiting just for you. And then, so, and then the next don't song. Pass up, don't pass this dick up. He said, don't pass this dick up. Because you're going to regret it. But no, no. But then the next song, he fall in love with her. Because he should give me all her love and half her time. So now he upset. Cause he didn't fail for the girl and the previous. <laughs> he didn't fail for it now. He didn't fail for the chick at the club. She can give me all her love, but half her time. You know, now he didn't got mad. Donnell, like I'm tired, tired of being a side dude. I want to be with you. Sorry. And let me, let me, let me pull these lyrics up. Do you? Oh, uh, hold on. Uh, let me see. Hold on. Hold on. Let me pull them up. There we go. All her love. She's got a man at home. Another situation. <laughs> I understand that's how it's got to be. Now, you just before in the previous song said you was cool with it. <laughs> with, with whatever she got, she got to do that home. I'd walk away, but I'm in too deep. I can't make no plans. Got me so frustrated because in my heart, I want you desperately. Then ran away from all the girls I've been dating. Go to track number three. And that's who he left to chase his other woman. <laughs> and then he goes, that's the thing that keeps me strong. I'm skipping through lyrics, y'all, and did some highlights. Yeah. She gave me all her love, only half her time. Still, it's more than enough to keep my hope alive. He sound like a, he sound like a Betty Wright or somebody. <laughs> Talk about, I'll, I'll be number two because I'm going to be all right. Well, I tell you, I learned that niggas wasn't shit in 98. Yeah. 
Okay, you might have been shit in '98, and then by '99, I was sure. Yeah, Donnell, kind of, <laughs> kind of burnt it up. <laughs> yeah, I burnt it up. Like, like just started seeing like this. What went in the? So yeah. Next thing you know, and then and shortly, like so, so as, as R&B continues on, you got albums like this, and then uh, several years later, you got niggas saying, "We ain't getting no young. We might as well get married." Shit, that was married. the next year. No, that was the same year. <laughs> yeah. All right. So next, no, 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 no. Said, next thing you know, niggas talking about some. We ain't getting no young. We might we as well. Might as well. As well. <laughs> and you and you nineteen talking about that? <laughs> talking about we ain't getting no older. You nineteen. She was pregnant. <laughs> then it goes to it's all right. He didn't got her back now. So he didn't, he didn't, this thing wore down. Yeah. He let the telephone ring. It's about to get physical. <laughs> it's just you and me on a late night creep. Plan on making you moan, but let's get the mood right. I got the 76 dime P and a dime bag of smoke. Oh. So let's get it on. Mm. Come on. <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. We gonna do it tonight. Don't worry about a thing. <laughs> we gonna do it tonight. <laughs> so he didn't got it back, y'all. Or he he going back and forth with her. Then he, he he going back to being upset again, y'all. Think about it. Uh, hold on. He, well, this one he's not so much upset with this one. Uh, <laughs> he's not so much upset. It's more or less. Of him saying, think about it, you know, like, look, I can get, do all these things for you. Think about it. So um, I waited for the moment to be with you. So forget all the things that he put you through. You should know I want to take you from your misery so you can be treated like a queen. And all you got to do is think about it. Just think about it. Because <laughs> he's fully in motive still in you now. Like now he's went from, I ain't tripping that you got a man, to now He's full on saying, you just need to leave him like I left my girl in track number three where I want to be. Yeah. Yeah. Then he go to, he won't hurt you. Now he's fully in, he's in full desperation mode now. He's like, I need somebody. I'm tired, he's like, of, I, I'm tired of this uh, woman. I'm tired <laughs> of paying part of your bills. <laughs> and he's sitting the there. Saying, hey. He, the lyrics say he don't treat you like he used to, girl. He's got somebody else. Dirty man. Hey. This is dirty man for at least seven hey. months. Hold up. Girl. Hey, I, he didn't I, stop him to find out who it was. It's Felicia. She girl, lived on Newstead. <laughs> girl, I fear for you because you're all by yourself. Don't you shed a tear. Be strong. And don't let this nightmare get to you. Because some men got to have two girls. Then let them go. So he won't hurt you again. He's never gonna hurt you again, girl. You have got a friend in me. Lock the doors. I'm on the way. I think. I guess it's unlock the doors. Unlock. So they gotta lock the doors. It must be. I hope it's unlock the doors. But unlock the doors. I'm on the way because he has no right to put his hands on you. Ooh, oh. girl, it hurts me to see him play you for a fool. So pack your bags. Come go with me. I'll be that sunshine in your life. There's no need to worry. It's gonna be all right because he won't hurt you again. And then Donnell is now in full on fuck you bitch mode now on the second next song. He uh which is pushing. You just can't keep on pushing, you won't let it get away. You got my mind thinking we won't see another day. <laughs> if you keep on reaching and stressing me, you just might push me away. Hey, girl, you always got some drama going on. <laughs> Somebody told me they saw you on an X on your on an X man's arms. Kissing and laughing, passions and splash. Oh, stop, stop. He's went back to the girl on the third song. This is talking about the, the, yeah. the third song. Yeah, he's on the third song. Right, because like I said, when oh, we get to the, the next song, the he's, the he's absolutely made it back home. He's come back home. So wait, but get like finish this because he's he's come back home. He's on the way. Yeah. Hold on, let me finish this. Thing. Girl, you always got some drama, kissing and laughing, uh, passion, splashing, Alize, and you caught an attitude when I asked you what you had to say. Don't get it twisted, because I catch it on the low. But you got me open like I've never been before. You come late, come home late at night. I'm chilling with my friends. Then comes an argument. You got me thinking about leaving you again. You just keep on pushing. You won't let it get away. Okay, so okay. So either is he talking about the girl in three, or he's now finally got the, the woman that he's been pining over the last four or five songs, and now he's tired of her because he didn't got her. 
Yeah, he said, uh, you just keep on pushing, you won't let me get away. You got me, uh, my mind thinking you won't see me another day. If you keep on reaching and stressing me, you might just push me away. Hey. I think he's, and then she's with the ex that he already took her from. This is still in the same woman that he's been pining over. Because he's like, I see you with your ex. You mean the same nigga I, you, I took you from? <laughs> like, what you think? What you think was going to happen? This is a perfect script for a Tubi movie. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so as he's dealing, where I want to be is right, like said, so as, he, as he's dealing, yeah, with right, the drama, right uh, as he is dealing with the drama of his new young bitch, as he's <laughs> dealing with that, he is he left a voicemail for the girl that he left in number three. You are the reason why I live. A newfound joy I can't contain. I find myself thinking about your love. It's a feeling I get only my heart can explain. I want to love you every night and every day. You know, I need you in my life. Won't you stay? So, so now he's going back. Now he's going back to the original. Yeah, I feel like this. I feel like this. I feel like this. I feel like this is the voicemail. This is the voicemail. This is the voicemail. I feel like this is the voicemail. This is new young bitch is stressing him out. His homeboys are telling him. This Man, is just go, just go get your girl back. Just go get your girl. We told your ass, uh, leave Lokeisha alone, but here you go. <laughs> and that, like, my gal uh, mad at me because the shit that you did. I wouldn't even wish you when you broke up the girl. My gal mad at me. You fucking up. That's why I ain't been hanging with you. That's why I ain't been hanging with you. <laughs> this nigga at home sitting there drinking and, leave, and that nigga sitting at home with some Paul Masson and then left a voicemail. Yeah. Hey, this album is actually diabolical. <laughs> it's the perfect title, Where I Want to Be, because where did he end up? What, what was the last song? <laughs> Hold on, no, 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 so, no, 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 it's a, it's a complete circle. When I was down, so now he's fully mad at the original young chick, because it goes, when the I was down, she wasn't there for me. Push my love right out the door. At this point, I can't take no more. When I was, was down, you wasn't there for me. There's a reason I'm leaving you. Girl, I'm through. My all and my everything. She couldn't do no wrong until the cash was gone. Ooh! Oh, he was tricking his dough on the new woman. I'm, I said it was the new young but man. Yeah. He was pressing okay. him out. He was, that, this is what I'm saying. Yeah, is that, freaking no, he said the cash is out. My the, cash is gone. This man, man, he was tired of sending cash apps for, uh, for lunch. <laughs> he was tired of paying for bundles. He was tired of lace fronts. He like, he damn, he always want money. He don't know, like, she don't know none of the songs that he's singing in his car. All right, this man, she is, and all she want to do is turn up and go kick it with her girls. He is tired, and he ain't had a good home-cooked meal in a long time. Yeah, all she make is hamburger helper. Listen, <laughs> Uh, every every weekend, it is chicken Alfredo. Or oh, Rotel. Uh, that's it. That's all she can make. That's it. Now she can try to mix up the Rotel. I put something different in it this time. He is tired. And is and, and, the, and the last song is back to now. And actually, you know what? We need to keep this album order actually the way it is. It goes back to, you know what's up, the remix. So is he back in the club again? Trying to find another woman? So that's the cycle of life. Like, is, <laughs> is anybody on the remix? No, it's left eye. So the original doesn't have left eye on there. Yeah, so the first, uh, the first song is you know what's up, but it's the one without left eye. Oh, no, no, no. And then the uh, the last track okay. is the remix with left eye. He, he so came back to you starting over again. You're just doing the same thing over hey, again. He came back to the club like I got my home girl with me. Now what? <laughs> <laughs> Emotional roller coaster in this album, <laughs> but the song so is all up, he's back in the club. He and back in the, the, club. the cycle repeats itself. <laughs> Yo, if, if we ever interview, interview Donnell, this is exactly what we're going to talk about. Yeah, yeah, be like, hey, like, did you ever end up where you wanted to be? <laughs> no, no, did you do this on purpose of like this album being a circle? <laughs> like, if you just going through shit with your old girl, new girl, then dumping her, and you back in the club again because. At the time, we're not tripping off of. We just listening to the song. Yeah, but when you look at the track listen, the way it's played, if you just listen, he going through it. 
And then on the next album, there was that one song. It, it was a little. I know you. I forgot the name of. It. Oh, you talking about life goes on? It's uh, uh, you know I love you. Yeah, you know I love. You. So he didn't got married. He was gonna propose on the next album. <laughs> Don't now, you know. is it what, what is it a new woman he met at the club or is it the woman back to number three? Um, you know that there is a where I want to be part two, right? It, it is. is, it's on that album, it's on the uh, it's on the third album, it's called Where You Are. Oh, oh. and so where you so the um, it's it's where you are, parentheses is where I want to be part two, okay. So he had his own version of confessions. He started. <laughs> but I think I didn't find out. Now, I will say this. I didn't find out about where you are. When did I find? It was. Oh, I, damn. The first line is, I'm sorry. I'm saying I'm sorry for leaving you. <laughs> damn, that's the first line. <laughs> wait a minute. I got to. Uh, um, I got to. I swear. I remember. I think I text Samantha and Dana about that. Like a long, I, like I think when I found out, I swear I sent like a text message. It was like, did y'all niggas know it was a where I want to be part two? So he did uh, go uh, back to the original but, woman. Listen, February 24th, 2014. I text somebody, I text Samantha and said, ain't nobody tell me there was a where I want to be part two. Because <clears throat> it wasn't a single. <laughs> Because he, he says, I'm saying I'm sorry for leaving you, but I wanted to start my life brand new. I was going through changes and could not see that with you is where I want to be. Nothing compares to you. And I heard from the pain I put you through. Baby, I need you desperately because I got to be where you are. Ooh. So he did get back with the original woman. Yeah, he had to get back, man. He just had to, he just had to run the streets for a minute. <laughs> He had to see what Damn, was. that's it's a yeah. running street. Right. And this is and this was when and this is how old the iPhone was at that time, that interface, but it was on Pandora. And I sent the picture to her, and that's when I like so I'm gonna say, like, how did I find out about that song? It was on freaking Pandora. And this dude that's straight up did a whole 360 of an album and then finished. Oh, Donnie, this actual album is even better than I'm uh, than I remember just because of the track placement and the journey he goes on as a man that's in the streets. As a man is like, I got he because you know what? Because it's funny, he meet the new girl at the club, but he gotta go break up with the old girl because he's trying to get the new girl, but he ain't he get the new girl and she ain't nothing what he wanted. Now he back in the club, and then he go back to his old his new his old lady in this on the in the third album, basically. <laughs> Donnell, you killed it on this, man. Uh, look, shout out to you for this one, man. Yeah. Where can everybody hit you up at Stacy? <clears throat> um, you can find me at the polls. Like, so I I, yep. I want to talk about is voting. Get out, check your registration status, get out there and vote. If you are not interested in politics, that's fine. You ain't got to worry about politics. Politics will worry about you. <laughs> Please understand that. And um, for those out there that are hustling and struggling and all of that, you can get a role as an election poll worker and they making, well, I know here in Dallas, Dallas County is paying 18 24 an hour to be a, a, a be a poll worker. And that's a, a day's of worth of work. Yeah. So I'm just You're saying get out there and vote and please, because understand that right now, is some shit that's going on in Nebraska, some shit that's going on in Georgia. The, the people keep saying democracy is at stake. Democracy is fucking at stake. Like this is some unprecedented stuff that is happening. Like sit, turn on the news one day. Just, just run, go to YouTube, go to MSNBC <clears throat> and just watch a couple of clips and just uh, really get an understanding of what the other side is trying to do. So they are trying to interfere with the election prior to the election. They're trying to prevent a lot of stuff from happening. And so because of that, we have to be out there. So that's why I'm registered to, I can register people to vote in three different Dallas counties. Um, I was at a high school on Tuesday. I'll be at another high school tomorrow in classrooms um, in like in two different, uh, I think one's a, a government class, others I think like econ class or something, but I will be speaking to them about voter education and registering students that are 18 years of age or 17 years and 10 months old. 
So get out there and vote. Scott, where, where can people hit you up at, man? Hit me up everywhere. Cool ass Scott. Man. Catch me in the group in about five minutes. Right. <laughs> I'm, like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm definitely about to take a nap. So by the time I wake up from my nap, that's when Scott. Shift, 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 shift change. That's shift change. <laughs> Yeah, make sure y'all go to the group. I'm going to listen to 90s Music on Facebook. Jumping on there as well as us on IG as well. And thank y'all for listening as always. Peace. All right. <laughs>